Okay, let's get started. Amy. Riley. <laughs> That's a new intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just gave up on our standard introduction today. Yeah, I mean, if you don't know, my name is Riley Hamilton. And I'm Amy Scarlotta. And when Amy and I podcast together, we call this Turtle, Turtle time. time. Not to be mistaken with our hugest nemesis in the world, Ramona and Avery. That's right. Uh, we do get tagged uh, by accident by people thinking that we're Ramona's podcast, including today, Sonia Morgan. It was amazing. I thought this can't be the Sonia Morgan. I thought it was one of those, you know, accounts that are mm-hmm. like a fan account or something. But it was Sonia T. Morgan, her official one. She, I think, wanted to tag, um, you know, potentially wanted to tag <laughs> Ramona's yes. podcast. But she gave us a little shout out. Sure, I'm down. Yeah, that was kind of sweet of Sonia. <laughs> I think she would like our podcast more than Ramona's. I agree. Uh, I had to check to make sure that Ramona's podcast still existed after right. the... There's no way it makes it past the Roni legacy phase. She's going to be too busy. When she's in St. Bart's, you think she's going to want to hop on Riverside <laughs> and do a remote record with uh, no <laughs> her <way>. daughter? <laughs> Dude, speaking of fake accounts, I got followed by a fake Kyle Cook. It's like <gasps> Kyle Cook. 3195 or something and i'm like catfish me daddy <laughs> for real wow did, um what did it look like did it have his same profile picture so you'd think it I was didn't him confirm if it's his exact current profile he's got pic, that like but... that headshot you see the mullet it's like blue uh-huh. in the background it uh it was a janky account like you knew immediately that it was there were like no posts <laughs> oh really yeah oh i'm sorry but one but day i think he will where's your t- I almost called it Turtle Time. Uh, lover Boy merch. <laughs> That's a great question. Amanda. Amanda, we love you so much. We talk about you every week. <laughs> uh, I think that I'm going to check in because it's been two weeks since the last time I checked in. I know it's going to be... You're uh, like, it's been two weeks since it was two months. <laughs> yeah. So I did want it before the summer ended. But, right. But um, I think I know it's coming. If I know Amanda and Kyle, they're true to their word. I bet it's just... Uh, Megan was saying that it, they send it out to like a distribu- a uh-huh. distribution center and then maybe they send it out. But when that package comes, we'll talk about it all the okay. time. I'm we'll, excited. Um, I got followed by a, uh, like an Andy Cohen fan account. Mm. But it was but I thought it was Andy Cohen for a second, but it wasn't. Is that, isn't there one that's like on TikTok, like Andy Cohen's bussy or yeah, something? Yeah, I love that person. <laughs> that is one of my best TikTok friends of all time. I like that. Yeah, me too. Um, they, yeah. They are amazing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had another ball out night last night of our reunion C- watch party. Complete chaos. Yeah. <laughs> Junkyard dog. We t- we blew the roof off that place completely. I'd say so. The owner, Thomas, I- I'm telling you, he was stunned by the turtle time <laughs> impact. He kept saying it. He, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, he was too stunned to speak. He could barely speak because of our impact. They set up these beautiful chairs in the patio area. Did you ever go peek peek back there? I didn't. I went at the very beginning because I made little flyers and I put them back there. But I was too scared to talk to anyone to hand them the flyers. So I just left them outside and ran away. Oh, that's okay. It was... (laughs) Yeah, people weren't there really to like meet and greet us. They just want to watch this beautiful reunion in a sacred, like safe environment and yeah. i think we provided that uh yeah and the turtle time margarita was flying off the shelves they made amy and i a custom cocktail called the tipsy turtle and it was a spicy margarita that was very good it was good so i mean really it was just you know a beautiful environment it was fun everyone is uh like you know screaming cheering <laughs> booing yeah and they had subtitles this time or closed yes. captioning so we could actually actually really parse what they were saying because reunions have a lot of crossed dialogue mm-hmm. so yeah it was it was the perfect viewing experience if you're in la please come with us next week yeah we have two more trips i was gonna say around the sun yeah two more <laughs> trips around the sun we'll and be doing we it yeah oh man <laughs> Our bodies are just going to shut down once the final reunion airs. Our yeah. purpose will be done here on Earth. I do think we, we, I mean, I don't know how long we should talk about it, but as we move out of the Vanderpump Rules phase of our lives, yeah, you know, like you just said, I don't want to just die. Right. 
afterwards. I want to keep living. We have to talk about the new era of turtle time. Right. And we have to really, you know, focus on what is going to be as vibrant, you know, and powerful. I mean, nothing's going to have the impact the Vanderpump Rules did. Right. But we still want to be, you know, a voice for, you know, our turtle time the friends. The voiceless. <laughs> Yeah, I was really going to say that. We want to be a voice. Voice. Have you ever been silenced? We want to speak for you. But I, I it's just, is Orange County going to be the thing that we all latch on to next? I mean, we're going to be desperate for Daddy something. Daddy Andy claims that Orange County is going to be really good this season. Daddy Andy, though, is also responsible for Roni. <laughs> I the know, it was his idea. Have you gotten to that part in the book yet? No. He takes full credit for the idea of legacy versus or is it the full new blame? cast. Yeah. We'll, well see. We'll see. I mean, you know, I'm not going <laughs> to... I My expectations are... What's that called? I, I have, I, I'm worried about... Six feet under. <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about what it is going to be. But yeah. you know what? If anybody could pull it off, Andy Cohen can pull yeah. it off. I preface this by saying I feel like sometimes I'm a little judgmental of Andy only through love because I have very specific opinions about the world that he has built. So I say this all with respect. But the for me, Dubai and my first glimpse at New York have too much polish on them. They're giving Selling Sunset, which is not what I want. I want crazy batshit women that are a little older i don't want them to be like running through town in you know i don't want it to be about like louboutins real estate like did it like that can be like background but i want it mostly about their personality disorders yes yes totally and a huge problem is now that bravo is so established in these house these uh you know these shows and the franchise is so established that uh, a lot of people know the ins and outs of these franchises before they ever go on. Exactly. So they sort of know what the audience is looking for. Yeah, and it's like the Jen Shaw uh, syndrome, or except for her, it turned out to be amazing. But yeah. uh, And uh, the woman in uh, Dubai who brings a goat to a party. Yeah. Oh, I, I haven't watched Dubai. Okay. I hate to admit it. But, okay. But it was it. Um, I wouldn't tell you to. But. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't until we're called to cover it i'm not gonna make that my focus i still got to get through my beautiful beautiful southern charm that's more important i gotta see what's going on with whitney oh my god where is whitney today where is he right now is he in la if he's in la whitney i want (laughs) to interview you and talk to you about the first few seasons of southern charm that you might not even remember because i have i've had an aversion to to whitney from what i've seen i don't know if you terrifying (laughs) yeah i he makes me uncomfortable. One of the most uncomfortable watching experiences of my life is is watching Whitney navigate through the world. How about when he plays the Star Spangled Banner on guitar like Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, with his his band that's boner spelled backwards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like he has all the money in the world and he has chosen <laughs> his life. But he did make Southern Charm a reality, so you got to give true. him credit there. Honestly, I th- that's the thing. I don't want to be like a washed up Bravo fan and I don't want to be like... Uh, make Bravo great again or anything like that. I'm just so concerned that we'll never get back to what we had with all of these shows when people had no idea what they were signing up for. It's really hard to recreate. Is make Bravo great again a a (laughs) slogan that has already (laughs) existed in the universe? Uh, Ron DeSantis actually said that the other day. (laughs) He did at his, uh, when he was announcing his presidential candidate. Which if that's the case, I might have to think about it. Yeah, that's true. Well, good. (laughs) Um, I wanted to say, I guess, oh, I wanted to just to your point, I was kind of excited for Teresa and Louis' wedding special because mm-hmm. I was like, damn, this is a huge deal. If we were not in the Vanderpump Rules right. world right now, this would have been a huge, huge deal. Was it good? I'm behind. No. It wasn't good. It was really, really boring. Boring? I almost wanted wasn't to go. Wasn't it like trending? Wasn't Didn't something crazy happen or no? Uh, Louis <laughs> got mad again at Joe for some reason because how Joe. How red was his face? Oh, he's the reddest man on television. <laughs> You've never seen anybody redder. It was it was boring as hell. Their wedding was boring. It had um, burlesque dancers at it. So there were people with like uh, nipple tassels doing <laughs> somersaults. Um, and, you know, Melissa and Joe didn't go. The huge right. controversy. This season of Jersey, I think, was one of the worst you know, Bravo seasons in, in history. It was really bad. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do about... Do you, Who would you choose to go, either Melissa or Teresa? 
Well, my, my opinion is a little clouded by what my wife Megan said, which is that she she was saying that it would be kind of nice to see Melissa and Joe get a clean season without Teresa to see what you know drama they could provide and have Teresa cool off for a couple seasons because uh-huh. Teresa definitely, you know, the show has been so centered around her. She definitely, um, you know, feels like the reigning champ of New Jersey, which she should yeah. feel that way. Um, but maybe it'd be interesting to see Melissa and Joe. But then now as I say that, I just don't know what Melissa and Joe would actually provide without Teresa right. as the their um what's that called their kryptonite that's what they're always talking about is Teresa, Teresa and kyle are they the only ogs left like og season one still on yeah never I mean, left do we we count ramona as gone right like her her record is shattered well i guess tbd <laughs> but that's sad <laughs> I think you're right. But yeah, I gen- mean, like in regular terms, yeah, they're the only ones, right? And, and, and New Jersey is before was before um, Beverly Hills, right? Yes. So Teresa is actually the longest running yeah. housewife in history. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't mind Joe and Melissa and Teresa's constant battle. I don't mind it. <laughs> I think don't. it's interesting. It bums me out. It bums me out, but I you know sometimes I like to get bummed out when I'm watching Bravo yeah. with with real serious familial. Um, issues I think they're like people are like Melissa and Teresa are estranged right now so we can't possibly film the next season of New Jersey it's like what that sounds amazing (laughs) I want to see how they have to navigate when they absolutely hate each other yeah um yeah I it's a hard one for me because I'm not firmly on any one person's side I tend to think that Teresa is probably more difficult to deal with uh you know, but at the same time, I'm like, I think you guys just don't like each other. Who? Um, Melissa yeah, and yeah. Teresa. Yeah, they don't. They don't like each other. Well, yeah, I mean, they don't. But <laughs> but Teresa just has a sort of like, it's absolute loyalty or you die. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It's like you're dead. And, yeah. and she cannot like forget things right. from the past. Which also makes me not really have respect for the people that fall in line oh, by yeah. her side. Oh, I don't like Jennifer Aiden at all. Because I'm like, you're going to end up like Danielle. Yeah, in, you're going to uh, bite the dust. Years. Yeah, you can't just cling to <laughs> Teresa's coattails and last long. She'll, she'll burn you. Also, I should uh, specify that I meant Danielle from Summer House, not... Danielle stop oh, oh I thought you meant Danielle stop because she did kind of burn her I that would make sense as well but what my brain was thinking was uh I'm always thinking about Danielle and Lindsay on Summer House of course um and I was thinking like loyalty won't always pay out in the end if the person is yep. selfish totally you're exactly right a perfect parallel and almost segues perfectly into the Summer House minute but I actually wanted to get your thoughts on Call Her Daddy before we got to our Summer oh House God. Minute. It was really good. Really I've never, good. Have you listened to that podcast before? Never. I've heard all about it, but I've never listened. Except never. I listened to clips of the Gwyneth Paltrow one. Okay. Never in my goddamn life. <laughs> I knew it was a very big podcast. I knew it was very popular, yeah. but I had never uh, heard one second of Alex Cooper. Is that her name? Yes. Alex Cooper's Call Her Daddy, I think. Um, but I loved the overall... Uh, environment yeah it, it made I mean, we talked about this a little bit but i was very envious of her setup i loved it two beautiful <laughs> puffy chairs yep. sitting right across from each other kind of how we're doing now but yep. we're on a couch so we have to sort of side <laughs> saddle yeah and then i loved their mic stands yeah i loved the little you know tray tables or you know yeah. little stands to yeah. the left of them. it was a really it felt like a very comfortable environment yeah you guys for our YouTube watchers, we might have little mic stands next week. We're upgrading a little bit, uh, YouTube, inspired by Call Her Daddy. YouTube watchers, you're going to love that. Look Thanks out. for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you should. You have to. And also, we're working on the sound issues. You don't have to be, <laughs> you don't have to be upset about the sound. We're going to start syncing the sound from our actual mics to YouTube, right? <laughs> Instead of just a piece of shit iPhone that I've had for many years... Um, so if you're listening to this on YouTube right now, doesn't it sound so much better than last week? You're loving it. <laughs> um, so in, but does, or, uh, I guess in addition to being covetous of that beautiful, oh, beautiful space. Yeah. Ooh, it was nice. <laughs> it is nice. I thought the interview was very good. It was good. I was wondering, do you think Bravo was cool with it or not? No. 
I, I, why? Because why? it completely took the wind out of the sails of the reunion. Why? No, and that's think? why. And that's why she was racing to upload it like the same day. It was like recorded yeah, that day. Yeah, came out at like eight p.m. Yeah, she <laughs> she was trying to get ahead of the reunion, which I understand. That's the maximum, you know, uh, what press time or whatever, yeah. like the, the best time to put it out. But yeah, Ariana sort of undercut her reunion, which should have been. I'm, I, I know Andy and Bravo want that to be the only place for everything related to Scandaval because right. they sort of owe it to. Bravo. Yeah. I mean, we'll get into the reunion, but after I was so satisfied by the Call Her Daddy interview, it was nice and long, which, you know, we love a long podcast. We love when it's long. Um, And Ariana really got to like say her side and there's been enough time where she wasn't so filled with rage that she could kind of spell everything out more clearly um, and kind of just like tell her side truthfully. And I liked her so much in that. Um, not saying I didn't like her in the reunion, but the reunion was very like black and white, shut down. Like I want the info, yes. you know? And so like the reunion was kind of frustrating to me in that it was so combative that I was like, no, but I want the yeah the journey. I want to understand every piece along the way. Yes. And I was like so much more on her side hearing it calmly and just in a real sense than when she's just pissed and like, fuck you. I don't care what you have to say. Shut the fuck up. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Which I'm like, she's totally valid in feeling that way and talking to him that way. But as a viewer, I'm like, I want to like relate with you. I want to understand the truth and her call her daddy interview. I was like, Oh, like I believe everything you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, you know, I felt completely like Sandoval is just a dick <laughs> totally totally yeah it was it was great it, it was a great format to just listen to her story the reunions are not like that they're much more like sort of action-packed and more pithy and quick quickly cut it like you can't get a, the full scope of the story in that format so that was really um yeah nice it was it was just it was great to just sit down with ariana for two hours and hear her side of the story especially the timeline of the actual night Mm -hmm. that was great to hear yeah there was a little uh validating moment for us there yeah so um with the night that this happened at tom tom we amy and i were there we were running around getting our photo with james kennedy one of the best (laughs) photos of all time he i think he's since said james kennedy has said this that his photo with amy and i is one of the best photos he's ever taken (laughs) <laughs> don't quote me on that but i do think there's somewhere where he said that but we didn't know where tom and ariana were after he got done with his performance and i obviously wanted to race over and get a photo with him because at that point in my life tom sandoval was my hero <laughs> and then um uh, my wife megan and our very good friend Lindsay were in the bathroom and they yeah. were in the bathroom to spy on ariana they had no idea she was in there but they heard someone in the stall mm-hmm. with their legs tucked up. No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. I think they could see legs. They knew someone was in there, but yeah. they weren't making any noise. They were just standing in there. So they didn't know. They were like, whatever. And they were just talking amongst themselves. And then. Yeah. And then it was Ariana of all people bust out of the stall, which she said, but she busted out. Yeah. Like almost kicked the door down. Yeah. Uh, Megan and Lindsay said that she like ran into them because she didn't really know anybody was out there. She sort of like stumbled out in Uh her obvious, you know, she said, I forget what emotion she said. Like she was just completely flabbergasted or completely flustered. She had no clue. It was like surreal. Yeah. And then she said in the Call Her Daddy interview that she like didn't want uh, those girls in the bathroom to think that she had just gone to the bathroom and didn't wash her hands, which is kind (laughs) of funny to hear her side of what that was. But yeah, so uh, Megan and Lindsay were... uh, a part of history That's in right. the bathroom when Scandaval, when the universe shattered. <laughs> yeah. I love those little validating moments. You know, Kristen Doty talked about her night there and there were some validating facts because when she was saying, you know, uh, where she, where the group was hanging out is where I saw Ariana talking about the phone. So I saw that happen your wife, our friends saw her in the bathroom. So we have like the basic principles going on. We, of course, that night didn't know what was going no. on, but in retrospect, because I remember, I think I said this on our first episode, but when I went to Vegas and all of this shit was unfolding and we were just getting update after update after update of how this happened and when this happened, 
we were like oh my god they found out she found out at tom tom we were there that was two days ago uh we were all in the group thread and jimmy was like that's probably what she was doing in the bathroom True. stall and i was like that is right that's so what she was doing in there yeah yeah it's <laughs> it yeah it's amazing i mean it's just yeah i guess i just i i just can't believe you know we were there I like of all things i believe. <laughs> I am just like Ken when he walked in to tell Lisa the biggest tea of his life. I just can't believe it. Um, um, but yeah, I thought the interview was really good. And she came off like she's doing very well. And, um, you know, she's been doing like 400 sponsorships a day, which I'm like, strike while the iron's hot, you know, like. For real. It, buy a new house. Yeah. Like get like $5 million out of this. Mm -hmm. Buy a new house. Live the best life ever. Open the sandwich shop. Like, yeah, just go nuts. I, I saw there's like a, you know, the cut, you know, uh -huh. that outlet. They did a breakdown of all the endorsements oh. she's had. And it's like 15 endorsements. It's amazing. They, the, it's funny because they're all like social and like on air because I'll see them on TikTok or Instagram first. And then when you're watching Vanderpump, then you're like, oh, they did on air as well. So I saw the Bic one oh, yeah. last night that I had seen on TikTok. And it's like, I think the, the bit is like, for men or women but not that guy yeah yeah they all have a little <laughs> little taste of scandal and then i love the uber one oh ad. my god that's, obsessed. that's like a super bowl ad we could be gucci spawning so fun they played that last night and yeah. the house it blew the roof off again it's stuck in my head at all times yeah it's so fun well, uh, oh one thing about the call her daddy interview that i really liked actually the one thing that i like specifically remember that was interesting to me was that the um the kill herself aspect yes. of the whole thing i remember the finale that was a thing that really struck me as very you know obviously so dark yeah. and the way sheena responded to it made me actually think that that was like something that was you yeah. know discussed because sheena you know sheena didn't treat it like what are you talking about you know but then for ariana to say that he might have equated, equated the fact that she said, I'm going to move away, I'm going to delete my socials, I'm going to quit the show or whatever, to, that Sandoval interpreted that right. as like, I'm going to like leave my life. Right. You know, so it's like, I, she says, I don't think I specifically ever would say that, but I think he just interpreted like me giving up all of this as right. like ending my life, which to me that does sound like possibly something Sandoval would think like totally. that that's a fate worse than death right exactly like she was saying basically this life is over yes like this life yes not my literal life on earth which actually I can totally see him being like I'm gonna take the money and run on this and like um you know <laughs> it's a perfect out yeah. if you're worried about am I is that we could be go cheese balling <laughs> Sorry, we had a technical difficulty and we immediately resolved it with perfect uh, precision, right? We've, yes. <laughs> Everything we did was good and we are back fully and Amy was saying something, just we were talking about the loss of life versus Ariana's uh, actually saying like, I'm done with this life, right? right? Like, right. Well, I because yeah, I... It is interesting. I liked that she laid out exactly what conversations she thinks he was talking about when he keeps saying that they that he tried to break up with her over and over again. And she's like, you saw examples of what that looked like. It was just basically state of the union conversations about their relationship that didn't end in a breakup. So yeah. why is that considered him trying to break up with her if it doesn't end in a breakup? <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. It, it seems like he waffled back and forth and he, you know, would debate it. And then he would say, actually, things are good. I think like Schwartz said that, you know, that things would get good again. And then he still wanted to continue his relationship with Raquel. And yeah, it's awful. But, it, it, you know, yeah, Ariana just comes off, like you said, it's just like when you listen to her talk, it's just sounds, it's so reasonable. It's mm -hmm. so well articulated. She's so smart, obviously. And, yeah, it just makes Sandoval look worse and worse. Yeah. And she was saying one of the things she said was that she would go to bed and leave them downstairs partying. And then she would get texts from her neighbors being like, can you please shut the music down? And she's like, I'm not even down there anymore. And uh, 
you know, she was saying that he was pissed off when all those people were visiting her after she found out and that he was like, get out of here. It's my house too. And then I saw in the extra bonus clip from the finale. (gasps) I didn't watch that yet. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I saw a clip where Sandoval is telling Raquel, um, that apparently he had like footage of like the outside of the house and whatever. And he could see that like so many people were rolling up and he was pissed that so many people were there because he was like, he was telling Raquel like, she'd always get mad at me. She wouldn't let me have parties at the house. Oh man. And I'm like, well, first of all, it sounds like you did have parties at the house all the time. Yeah. Arena said there was always someone sleeping in the guest room, like every single (laughs) night of the week. It sounds like you guys have plenty of fun at the house. And second of all, she just had her world turned upside down. The people coming are like visitors. She's not throwing like a rave. Yeah. And it, yeah, <laughs> imagine you're like showing up to support Ariana after this man cheated on her and he's like yelling at you for being there. It's like, could you have a worse opinion of someone than that? I was just going to ask, do you think when they were all partying, when the neighbors were like, um, turn it down and it's Tom Sandoval and Raquel and whoever else like partying downstairs, do you think they were listening to that Good as Gold remix for Uber One? I know it hadn't come out yet officially, but do you think... I mean, I hope so. I Maybe all would be forgiven if that's what they were up to. I'm just imagining the, for some reason, the partying seems so lame to me. Tom Sandoval, <laughs> Raquel, and whoever like yeah. other people are there and they're just like listening to music at 1 a.m. on a Tuesday. Oh my God. <laughs> doing yeah. mushrooms. Exactly. Um, that's the thing. I'm like, you know, uh, I think she said this on Watch What Happens Live and then maybe call her daddy, but she was saying that she thought that they were going to age into yes. chilling out together yes. and that he still wants to rage all the time and just go out all the time. And I'm like, I mean, she parties too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I think for most, in most people's point of view, Ariana still parties like yes. more than most. <laughs> yes. She's got the perfect schedule. You, <laughs> you have, you binge shows, you stay in during the week, you rest up and you party You know, once a week or once every two weeks. It's the perfect system. Right. Like she was saying, he, you know, he has a problem because he wants to party when it's not even someone's birthday or an event. Like he just wants to go out like basically to the opening of an envelope or whatever. But um, yeah, for sure. Um, So yeah, great interview. Anything else you can remember that I mean, we were remarked on a lot. I mean, it was good. Yeah, it was good. I would recommend uh, watching it. I, I've never watched a podcast on Spotify before. Yeah. It looked cool. Yeah, it looked... It, I'm like, can we good, do that? Of course we can, Spotify. <laughs> but actually, know. we want them to watch on YouTube. Yes. Do... Yes. <laughs> well, until Spotify buys our podcast, please watch us on For YouTube. For $50 million. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Turtle time uh, in the biggest Spotify deal of all time. They think it's Ramona's. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, too late. <laughs> too late. We signed the contract. I dressed up like Ramona in the interview. <laughs> I wanted to bring up, again, for our YouTubers, we're wearing uh, Vanderpump Rules Season 10 Reunion Crew Lanyards. The, I mean, this is a piece of history. We can't say where we got it from. Yeah, we know someone that knows someone that knows someone that was involved, yeah. and they brought them for us, and we have the little mic, the walkie uh, codes on the back, um, and I love this, and I'll never give it up, and I want everyone to sign it yeah well, well of course we will uh maybe at the james kennedy see you next tuesday when jackson uh, james are right. here, we get two signatures at least <laughs> and maybe right. lisa um and we're also we're compelling you all if you are listening to this go to youtube really quick and look at this beautiful uh <laughs> artifact that we have and also subscribe while you're there yes <laughs> we're never gonna you you have to subscribe so that we can stop asking you to subscribe yes once we have a thousand subscribers we'll never talk about youtube for a goddamn second in our lives we just need a thousand and we're done yeah but we did hit a thousand on tiktok so that we could go live which we did from the party yes so we have the best tiktok followers in history (laughs) now we have 1800 now we can go live anytime we want it's beautiful fun and thank you all for being there on tiktok Yeah, I uh, couldn't decide if I wanted to order a wine or beer, and I asked the live uh, commenters which one I should get, and they said wine, and it was the right call. So fun, and so sweet (laughs) to just have people telling us, you know, or asking questions of us and answering questions. It's so beautiful. Um, Okay, so we talked about Call Her Daddy. We talked about the decline of Bravo in general. (laughs) Um, We should talk about your star-making appearance on, what's it called? Sure. Thank you for bringing that up. 
Um, so there is a documentary. It's it's an ABC News Nightline documentary, but they have this very uh, this like new show that's for like short form documentaries or like mm-hmm. hour long documentaries. And they did one called The Anatomy of Scandaval, and they wanted to get to the bottom of what the hell this <laughs> Scandaval thing was. So they and they also wanted to uh, hear about it from a fan perspective. Yes. So I was very clearly like you know it's like basically like they wanted to hear it from an obsessed fan and so i was yeah they came to my house uh for a full day like it was like i think like six hours or eight hours you know onto the patio or whatever Did and they buy you lunch no <laughs> no they they for sure would have if i would have expressed any hunger <laughs> pangs or if i would have complained about anything but i was so nervous and i just let it rush over me yeah i mean they used that footage you are woven throughout that entire piece did you like it yeah i was laughing i think it's a perfect thing i sent it to my parents uh i'll see if they respond after we record i because i think they're still confused about what all of this is and it's the perfect little piece to send to them to understand what has gone down and most importantly your lower third says host of turtle time yes it does (laughs) co-host co-host of turtle time so hopefully there's a lot of people that are pausing on that uh, screen of me and they see turtle time and then we have new listeners this week i yes. hope yeah um because there's so there's prez hilton is on it ira madison heather mcdonald uh la la yeah yes uh, Megan King. they got the heavy hitters yeah and riley you- hamilton yeah <laughs> <laughs> riley hamilton megan king no longer Edmonds. Edmonds. heather mcdonald yeah jamie all over yes um yeah, I mean, but I feel like they used you the most. Well, or maybe I'm just hypersensitive to it, but I'm so happy you said that. <laughs> I don't know if that's the case, but I am going to after this, I'm going to watch it five more times and catalog how long I'm in it. Yeah. And then I'll let you know, but I do <laughs> think no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it was so fun to be a part of. I'm so lucky to be a part of yeah. it, really. I mean, well, that they, could have been anybody. They did drop in. I make a quick appearance they do post that james photo that we were talking about yes the ago. one yeah the photo i just said that james has officially declared the best photo he's ever taken of himself that's in there so if you want to see that photo it's in this documentary preserved in amber yeah. this thing isn't going anywhere <laughs> it's not the best picture i've ever taken but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> this is the best video J- james kennedy said this is the best photo he yeah. has ever taken in I his wish life that was the same for me <laughs> well you do you remember we talked about it i think maybe only 10 times but do you remember what a uh, uh, hassle it was getting that thing to work yeah <laughs> and i complain about this all the time but the iphone 13s take the worst <laughs> photos I ever know. We learned that night, and we'll never forget and your photo with LVP. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, okay. We did, I think we did good. Call Her Daddy, yes. locked in. Yes. <laughs> the Decline of Bravo, yeah. absolutely locked in. Shout out the documentary. Yep. Are we ready for the Summer House Minute? Summer House Minute. <laughs> we're we're going to try and make it not 30 minutes. Yes. So, set your, set your timers. <laughs> if we go over 60 seconds, comment. <laughs> or wherever you can comment and just say, hey, guys, you went a little over. <laughs> but I'm telling you. Like and reply and subscribe. <laughs> but, yeah. But I, I but I am I am so excited to talk about Summer House. I, ho- yeah. I wish people were in this world with us. It seems like the world doesn't want to have a Summer House <laughs> minute. You're going to be honest with you. This might be like blasphemous based on our sort of topic. What we, you know, our Vanderpump standum. But at this point, I don't know if it's just because I have been so saturated on Scandaval by this mm-hmm. point that I I get way more, I'm going to say it, way more fired up at this point about Summer House because it's so underserved that I'm like, is anyone seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, no, I, I, yes, I feel the same way. It's very, it's underrated yeah. at this point. I mean, I'm, I'm a newcomer, so I'm... I've watched this all within the last like month and I'm so stoked on it. And you're right. It, we haven't seen this yet. Like with Scandaval, we know every single minute yeah. of this thing, like pretty much. There's yeah. like not many questions that need to be answered. I right. mean, we pretty much know what happened in Scandaval. But yeah, Summer House, it's like this feud that's going on. It's all like new and yeah. fresh. And I love that it's with the established principles that we've yeah. seen since day one. I mean, Danielle's been there since what, the second season? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So 
uh, that wasn't part of the summer house minute. That was just teeing up the summer house minute. So set your timers count. right now. But <laughs> yeah, I'll just say first because I want to hear your thoughts because you're an established tried and true summer house fan. I'll just say up front, I loved the finale. I thought it was great. Yeah. The perfect combination of what summer house does right. Yeah. A little bit of drama, some very fun, silly moments, and an epic party. And a little yeah. bit of Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I love that everyone just kept saying that Sierra dressed like Avatar. Like not yes. Navi <laughs> or like... <laughs> not a character. No. It's just she's an I'm Avatar. I'm Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Avatar. <laughs> but, yeah, it was a really good party. Yes. Which we used to be promised every week, but less so more recently but i almost liked that this season started out as such a dud the mm -hmm. first three or four episodes no one's partying because no one's having fun yeah. everybody's going to bed and the vibe is off yeah and then it took carl and Lindsay like get the hell out of there <laughs> yeah. for the fun to start to pop up and then, then we got this amazing party yeah no yeah starting uh last week when they went mia remember Paige was like is it a coincidence that we're having more fun than we've ever had? And yeah. then that continued on to this week. Um, yeah, I'll just say, you know, the obviously the number one topic of the show and this episode is Danielle and Lindsay. And I was shaken to my very core at that conversation that happened in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um I can't believe that most of the internet is team Lindsay. I really feel like I'm an alien. I don't know what is wrong with everyone. I can't understand how you could not see her face during Danielle's please and think that she was being cool, calm and collected and not smug and demonic. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, to your point, and I want you to keep going because I, I just want to make one little note. I'm even more surprised by the people who weren't Lindsay fans, like for this entire run, and this is what turned them into Lindsay fans. Like this is the this is the moment that got you to be a Lindsay fan. It's but anyway, insane. I had the same exact take. The way she was looking at Danielle was was like she wanted to kill Danielle, smirking at her. So happy that Danielle is like pouring her heart out and she has no response to it. Like I, I did not take that face as I'm breezy. I'm just <laughs> letting her get her, her screaming out at me. And then I'm going to walk away because I am actually so over it. it. It didn't have that feeling at all to me. No, no. And I liked what you said on your TikTok of like, all you need to know about that situation is how they each walked away from it. Danielle literally collapsed to the ground, yes. like sobbing. Yes. And Lindsay was just like, well, you know, she was Damn. yelling at me like, Meh. like she's just like, takes no accountability whatsoever. Yeah. And I'm like, even if you think that Danielle's wrong, you guys have been best friends for many, many years. Like, why aren't you upset that she's upset? Yeah. Even if you think that she's going about it wrong, which I will, you know, she, Danielle has not done everything the way that she should, at least specifically for being on TV and wanting people to be on your side. Like going around the engagement party talking shit was not great. But iconic. Absolutely. Um, but why aren't you sad that yeah. your friendship is ending and it ends on her being like, you're not coming. First of all, she calls Carl her husband and Danielle's like, Jesus Christ, are you fucking married already? Like, which I'm like, yeah, in her mind, she like is. That's oh, like course. all she cares oh, about. Of course. They've probably been married since in her mind <laughs> since the day she met Carl. Yeah. And then she's like, you're not, what is it? She says, I'm not, you're not com coming to the wedding or something like that. Yeah. And uh, she's like, good. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. It, it's just, I guess, you know, if we had to make the case for Danielle, which is like, all we're doing as we're watching this it's just that danielle is hurt that first of all the relationship is moving fast i'd say objectively yeah people you could say they are so in love and they've been friends for six years the best of friends and they secretly loved each other that whole time which i know is not the case yeah carl was not loving Lindsay that whole time <laughs> well, i mean do you think he was like an, in love with remember Lindsay? they fucking tried to date and that's when she got activated they yeah. had the worst date of all time yeah yeah an amazing date um, to watch. Um, and Danielle voiced skepticism, I'd say, reasonably at the speed at which this was moving. And then after that, I guess, when, since she made that objection, then she felt they cut her out completely of the equation of them 
getting serious yeah. at all. So then they're, Lindsay's best friend is just not a part in any way of this thing that she has been through so much with Lindsay to get to this point and then yeah. doesn't get the the beauty of being there to celebrate your best friend at exactly. the end of this, right? Yeah. Like it's like who who can't relate to that? Yeah. It's just like inconsiderate. It's like I guess you think that she doesn't deserve that or it's unnecessary it's just between them two it's just carl and Lindsay, and no one else should care it's like a relationship life works no a relationship (laughs) is a celebration of the people around you who made it possible and the friends you had through this and the friends you made together the friends you lost when you got together like it's all a part of your story that's when you have a a a wedding and you're inviting all these people who like celebrate your love you don't care what anybody thinks about you you don't want danielle there your ride or die and you can't and yeah and the fact that she's just so like over it already just seems unjustifiable you're just you're fine in in six weeks that your best friend is just gone from your life and you don't even have a reaction to right disinviting them from the wedding it's yeah it's like pathetic i hate it um this something happened that uh, in real life that we were equating to this situation a friend of ours me and Jimmy um, the last weekend I hung out with a couple our friends that are a couple mm-hmm. or married couple and Jimmy couldn't come so he wasn't there and while we were all hanging out um, they revealed to us that they're having a baby Whoa. which is congrats to them um and i my first thing in my mind was like fuck i'm gonna have to tell jimmy after like i feel bad that he wasn't here and then our friend was like i called jimmy on the way here and told him the news and i was like see that's nice like you know what i mean like it's like a small thing but it makes you feel like you're being considered yes it's yes which he wouldn't have been mad if that didn't happen which maybe the example would be danielle would be like you didn't call me yeah right (laughs) and they'd be like what but yeah um you know, it's like, yeah, like, give her some grace. She's your closest friend for this many years and actually introduced you to your husband. Yes, so, right, because um, was it, w- did Danielle bring Carl on? Because no, Carl was on from the very first season. Maybe. Well, uh, yeah, or, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Whatever. But they, they were, yes, right. They right. were brought together yes. closely by being yes. a group. But. For sure. So then apart from that, which, you know, that was like the confrontation, you know, we were most focused on. But it was just, I love that Paige and Amanda and Maya. Do you like Maya? Yeah. I love Maya. Yeah. I really love her. I think it's the best casting they've done in the last three years or whatever yeah, since Sierra. It's very hard to find someone that's chill and not boring. And why do people, yeah, I know. And why do people want, if pe- boring is like the most cursed <laughs> word you can have on Bravo, yeah. do you really want everyone to be the most <laughs> amped up, no. wild person in the world? Can't some sprinkling of calm be in there and and Maya has shown that she can be fun as hell too right I guess there's a difference between yeah there's calm or not particularly confrontational or insane and then there's just dud yeah and to me Gabby is a dud I know I I mean it's hard to say I, I didn't really bond with Chris or Gabby and then Sam I I see sparks of fun with Sam and I just can't deny this this um what's his name Corey romance I cannot (laughs) deny the fact that when I'm watching those two it's like they want to like go in the bushes and yeah each other right (laughs) then in front of you I I like watching that I miss some of the sexual totally that's what summer house raw sexual energy about yes like when's the last time we saw someone sneak into a closet or whatever and then have the walk of shame out of the from the hidden cameras yeah exactly I think they need like uh, there was a real like uh, there was like the um, it, there was like th- two men at the start of the season or three men versus like seven women or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right. So there wasn't a lot of opportunity for like a romance to happen. Yeah. And then when they got Corey in there, it's like, hey, who the hell is Corey going to hook up with? <laughs> yeah. Like It really added Tarzan this new Tarzan <laughs> himself. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chris actually has grown on me okay. post the the frat night or whatever when he hung out with uh carl and uh kyle um you know he doesn't bring a ton but i actually feel positively towards him um he seems like he actually maybe is low-key fun yeah i'm like neutral on him i i'm i don't dislike him in any way um sometimes he feels a little performative with his partying it's not like as organic as kyle's partying um but i really like i loved the moment where 
uh, they quantified his sex with that girl Lauren when oh, Tuesday yeah. came back and he go, she goes, he you want to know what score eight. you got? I loved him. Like That was just such a fun... That was a great night. Yeah, that they was so like, fun. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> eight, eight, eight. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they'll probably give them all a chance to come back because they weren't like so much of a dud. Like they even showed Gabby's like date or, right. and, and stuff. So I think they'll all probably come back. You think Chris will come back? I don't know. I... I, I f- was kind of thinking, well, yeah, Sam will, I feel like, definitely come back now oh, that, yeah. you know, she has the romance. Oh, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know about the other two. Um, it was also interesting, sorry, not to blend these two things, but Ariana multiple times in her press tour uh, has mentioned Sandoval and Winter House. Oh, I know. Which was very interesting. I know. Yeah, yeah. She is saying that Sandoval wanted to put off breaking up with her so that he could still be like considered a hero when he got onto Winter House and not have like him in the shadow of like a breakup and announcing the Raquel thing because right. then it would ruin his, I guess, Winter House experience. <laughs> so that's kind of an interesting detail. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, so I, I feel like we've, I've asked this question like 30 times, but just Schwartz went. Just Schwartz yeah. went. He went in the, like, the height of Scandival drama, so that's going to be really interesting. <laughs> it was like two weeks in, he had to fly to wherever they go. When is that on? I, don't know. I mean, I can't wait. That's exciting. I, um, it really pays in dividends to watch all of the shows. I think I watch most of the ones that would pay off, but specifically summer house vanderpump southern charm are like a trifecta now yes that it really pays to have watched all of them because yes. you're like yep know who that is know all about that da, da, da. like yeah <laughs> yeah and i didn't even I, I didn't know southern charm watching winter house and it's like craig and austin and they mm-hmm. did a good job of like recapping their drama enough like their ex-girlfriends and stuff like i didn't I didn't feel a lack there, but now I'm so glad to know Craig's like origin. I feel so much more strongly about him. Yeah. Mostly positive. I haven't seen his like awful era yet. I do have one thing to say to Craig though. Craig, when you're listening to this, I don't know if you listen the minute it comes out or if you wait a week, but I didn't think you did your best at the costume for the jungle <laughs> party. He just put on you just put on pink shorts and you painted a flamingo on your face. That's not gonna cut it. No. Right? No fun. No. What, what, what happened? Paige didn't want to help him out with his outfit? Lazy Bones Jones. <laughs> Freaking, you're only on certain episodes. You yeah. have to bring it. Yeah. And I was like, I was sort of like, they, it was like the third conversation Craig and Paige had about how their like relationship is stagnant. I was like, I don't know if I need another conversation about this. It's like, okay, know. guys, you, you know. And it's also like, this is not a conversation to be had at a like kegger party. <laughs> like, why are you yeah. talking about this here? Yeah. Also, low key, she doesn't want to marry you. Yeah. I mean, it, that's... In my opinion. Yeah, that's like, that's the, I think, the read I get on it just from how she's talking about it. It's like, let's just keep things slow, slow, slow. <laughs> let's go as slow as hell, Craig. You know, and it's like, that's not, you know, if she really, really was amped up to marry him, I, I don't know. She's just, I think the the roadblock of where they're going to live is just so mm-hmm. huge. I say, I say both of you move to Los Angeles, a neutral spot. <gasps> Spinoff? spinoff Craig and Paige in LA there's and then there's two lovable friends that they hang out with Amy and Riley that they go to their apartment every once in a while and hang yeah, on I would be like buddy buddy dee dee if it isn't nice to meet thee yeah that'd be so sweet I think there should like we just said I think there should be a spinoff Craig and Paige in LA and they have two you know best friends that they come to for relationship advice I love it I will totally join what uh reddit calls her and the other girls bed bugs which i don't think is a loving um term but they, I'll call join the, the bed bugs. they call them the bed bugs that's yeah. kind of funny i, I <laughs> saw someone say like the bed sore society it's kind of funny and then when they push that bed together and they call it the mega bed on the on bravo it's kind of fun i don't mind if they're sitting in bed as long as you're saying fun stuff in bed yeah they make up for it in other ways mm-hmm. um I think it was more annoying in the past when they were really separated from the group and now it's kind of integrated so it works. Yeah. But. It's interesting when Lindsay comes into the to the house to like talk to people and, like and she goes, "Girls, where are you?" or whatever and it's like she has no actual friends in yeah. the house besides Kyle and Carl. And even Kyle's like, "You're a psycho. I hate yeah. you." Do you and the the trailer <laughs> the reunion trailer it looks like Kyle says to Lindsay, I've never seen one more cold and emotionless than you. I seriously like started like crawling around on all 
football force during that reunion trailer. I was like crab walking like the exorcist down the stairs. I was so excited. I was like screaming. I'm ready. I, I mean, it's on Monday, right? Part one. Is it? Is oh my God. Well, isn't it? Right? I mean, I guess it would be. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about it. I mean, Summer House is so good. I mean, if you're listening to this and you just like our disparate Bravo conversations of everything in the Bravo universe, we're recommending Summer House. Yeah. I mean, we're fired up about it. It's, mm-hmm. it's as enjoyable to me as Scandival. Scandival is dark and, you know, like just hard to watch. It's about something so tragic in yeah. real life. It's this horrible cheating scandal. Summer House is like light and fun and it's a, and the drama is, is like friendship related. Yeah. It's like, it's like something that anyone can go through. Not this like awful, horrific cheating scandal. Right. No, yeah, the reunion looks bomb as hell. So it great. appears that at least the POV, POV of the trailer is that everyone is against Carl and Lindsay, I know, I know. <laughs> which is what the moment I've been waiting for. I know. Um, and then apparently you, you said it. I think that Andy is just like a total Radhouse stan. So he's going to be like defending them up there. Like, yeah. Um, I can't freaking wait. It's going to be like the Hannah uh, reunion exactly. when everyone was just hating Hannah. Yeah. I but, think Hannah has to come back. I know you don't like her. <laughs> Hannah, If you when you listen to this, you have to get back on Summer House. It's going to be like the Kristen Doty Nike slides, but like whatever shoes yeah. Hannah wears. <laughs> oh, I, I would love... I think Hannah is so ripe for a redemption season. I would love to see her back. I want to see this relationship with Dez. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah, but I just... We recommend Summer House. I mean, get totally. into it. Absolutely. It's worth the entire ride. I know it seems daunting. Seven seasons. You'll never whip through something uh, sooner. It's also the perfect summer show. You just That's get to right. have summer encapsulated every season and watch it this summer. It's true. I agree. Um, all right. Well, that was the Summer House Minute. And oh, I love it when it <laughs> syncs up perfectly with 60 seconds. Um, so we're going to take a quick break because we're 51 minutes in and let our sponsor take us away. We've been getting this amazing sponsor. It's, I think, Sheena usually reading her factor meals. Yes. Have you heard that one? Yeah, I get really excited when it's Sheena. I, I love it. It's like having <laughs> Sheena on the podcast. We need to get the Uber One ad. How does it go again? It's like... Something for you to save on rides and eats. Some something we could be go cheese balling, and that's remember those savings. Yeah, I love that. Lala is very good. Lala is a good actor. She brings in that. comedy. Total comedy. See, I think we'll get that Uber One ad right now because we sang we triggered it. Triggered it. And then watch like they're gonna we're gonna say that, and then they're gonna get the worst ad they've ever heard. Do you need car insurance? Like anyway, not not knocking car insurance, obviously. But you want to take a break? I'll shell out any even. Honestly, I'll make like et- <laughs> ethically questionable sacrifices for our sponsors. What I'll do you do mean? Anything. Me too. <laughs> oh, <but> you, <laughs> whoever I'm wants like to. Like blood diamonds. I <laughs> uh, love them. Yeah. Sparkly, shiny. They're amazing. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, you do not know the lengths to which Amy and I will go to <laughs> advertise something. So. This hit us, <laughs> hit us up. If you are listening and you have some money and you have something that you need to promote, let us know. Email us. Uh, so we're gonna just go to the bathroom. Um, what do you think? Certified, Sounds great. Certified. certified turtle piss. All right, we love you. Bye. <laughs> well, we are freshly pissed. <laughs> I love when we get a little break and then I can relieve myself and then we can go in full force. <laughs> I know because sometimes when we have too much pee in us. When we want to talk about something exciting, it hinders our conversation, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I get distracted. It's like when um, Joe Gorga says that he's filled with poison. <laughs> and that you, he says that stuff is poison in you. You have to release it. Yeah. You're, that's kind of what our piss is that's like. That's how I feel about pee pee. <laughs> yeah. So the funniest, one of the funniest comments I've ever gotten on TikTok is when I said the ultimate boys trip, Juicy Joe's Bahama Blast. And, and I said it was three weeks long. And someone, whoever you are, is the funniest comment. They said, Joe Gorga for three weeks. How the hell is going to be able to release his poison? <laughs> Which is so funny. I love yeah, so and you know, Joe wears release the poison like shirts. He does. Yeah, it's like his catchphrase. It's like men's rights. Yeah, release the poison. That's poison in you. <laughs> um, well, well, one thing before we get to the much anticipated reunion talk. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that Sierra, when she dressed up as a Navi, <laughs> this is six months before Way of Water was coming out. When when it's either anticipation for way of water was at an all-time high or you could say it's the nadir of avatar i don't know 
it's just amazing that she did Avatar at the time she did it in anticipation <laughs> yeah. of Way of Water. Yeah. It's either extremely, she was on like the Comic-Con schedule, like way ahead. Yes. Or she's just like an eternal fan at yes. all time. Always on. Whichever one. I love it. I want to see more characters in the Bravo universe dress up like Avatar <laughs> Uh, Navi for parties. It was just the best when Danielle's like sobbing and they're all comforting yes. her and then you see her with her little fangs and yes. like the cat nose yes. like coming out from the and, side. And, and it is such a trope on Bravo to have <laughs> serious conversations when they're dressed silly. You know, it just happens all the time. Yeah. But this was one where I was like, okay, that is so silly that I, that actually provided <laughs> what it needed to provide there I that was got, amazing this is irrelevant but i just got a flash of the time that um sonia dressed up like marie antoinette without the bloomers and you could just see her bare ass <laughs> Wait, I, I actually don't remember that <laughs> i think it's the same party when it might have been the night that uh, bethany was on roller skates oh, okay um but yeah you just see sonia's full bare ass so oh, oh, oh yeah that's so fun <laughs> um is that the same party where yeah where sonia invites them to this like dungeon or it's like this um very small room and it's this very not fun yeah, party. Yeah, Jill's like pissed. Yeah, she yeah. like thinks this is one of the worst parties she's ever been to and yet yeah. Sonia's drunk as hell and she her, she's like, <laughs> she's like lift, falling over. <laughs> falling and her ass is exposed. Yeah, that's That's, that's what amazing. I'm talking about. Yeah, that is so fun and I'm so glad <laughs> Sonia messaged us today. I know, we should reply and just be like, hey, um, you probably met Ramona but we love you. Yes. <laughs> yes, we should. Yeah, I would love we that. We should send her like a video. Because like, I feel like if she saw us, she would love us. Do you think it opened the message gates so now we have access to Sonia? I think so. Oh, my God. Wait, really quick, just as a test. <laughs> let me just see if we can record a message right now. I mean, I know this is... Hold on one second. Let me just see if I can just do it in two seconds. If I can't, I won't do this. It yeah. says, Sonia tried to send you... Oh, uh, she just mentioned in the story. Wait, it's not a chat. Hold on one second. <laughs> is this... Can you do a video? I think if you hold it down. Okay. Hey, Sonia. Just wanted to say that we're recording the Turtle Time podcast, and we are so happy you messaged us. Yeah, you might have been looking for Ramona, but it was actually Riley and Amy, and we love you so much. You're one of our all-time favorites. We love you even more than Ramona does. So thank I would you. say so. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sonia, and we're going to send this to you right now. Okay. Good. All right, I just sent it to her. We'll let you know if she replies. <laughs> um, okay, so should we... Get in to yes. this. Are you ready for it? Whew. So, yes. There's a huge chunk that... So, it opens up, you know, it does, like, the recap. It says, you know, Andy saying, how did this go from a one-night stand to a full-on relationship between the two of you? It says, the scandal that changed everything. And then it goes on to the one-on-ones. It takes a full... 10 minutes to get to them taking their seats would you say that's longer than usual so what what was it the all was it the like the one-on-ones that yeah. were that were adding to them uh sitting down taking too long to sit down it was like yeah it was uh tom and andy yes ariana and andy a quick raquel and andy um and then schwartz and andy like yeah. messing around i actually liked i liked seeing them uh, slowly all come out onto the stage yeah. and appreciate each other's outfits, mm -hmm. like have a little bit of the banter. For sure. Like them to say, you know, Ariana, you look amazing. Like James, you look great. I love seeing James and uh, Andy's hug. Yeah. I thought it was kind of fun to see them and the, watching Lisa like come out, you yeah. know, like I liked seeing that actually. Oh, yeah. Was that no. just in the pumped up version? Um, oh, yeah, no, we should, we should that because oh, okay. I was saying, uh, my friend was like, do you think, because we were at the bar, they were like, are we going to get to hear the intro song and i was like not usually for reunions because it's kind of a cold open usually of like everyone getting out of the car with like curlers in their hair or like yeah. wearing uggs and it's always kind of like are you nervous da, da, da. like yeah. it's that kind of a thing yeah i totally thought we were going to hear that beautiful theme song in the bar but yeah um yeah so like uh, oh gosh i forget oh 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 so i just want to say that i'm referencing the pumped up version yeah it's actually amazing to watch i love hearing their curse words yeah in full the word fuck was uttered <laughs> uh, so, so many, many times. times and including I, by andy yeah I, oh, my favorite moment i'll just say it up front yeah. now before we forget when he goes did you just call me an ugly fuck <laughs> right do you remember that <laughs> yeah james is like no i didn't call you an ugly fuck <laughs> you're I handsome him. Yeah, that was he amazing also, after the uh 
fight or whatever andy's like stay in your fucking chair i know i i (laughs) I, you don't know that you miss people actually cursing and hearing it until you actually hear it like i'm so used to their bleeps that it doesn't even register in my brain but hearing them say it right made it very powerful like this is r i know yeah i was like this is rated r that i'm watching now and i'm glad it was this reunion that we get this r rated yeah almost x rated (laughs) triple x (laughs) <laughs> how much extra did you feel like there was because i had a hard time distinguishing since we watched it in such a raucous. i had no clue <laughs> yeah, I, had I had no, no clue. clue i don't know any of the difference between what we watched at the bar and the pumped up version except i loved hearing the curse words i felt like the walkout took a little longer like yeah. i and i don't know maybe there were some bonus scenes but i don't know i mean i i, I yeah. don't know but i would recommend the pumped up version because it's pumped up yeah i feel like it's maybe because I think the pumped up version was like 50 something minutes. 56. And, okay. And then on TV, it's what, like 42? Yeah, or 47 with commercials or something. Uh-huh. But yeah, go, get the pumped up experience. It was yeah. so fun. So overall, wh- like just rating this as a part one of a reunion, how did, how did you feel about it? You know what? I am hoping personally that the next one is better. Okay. And why? Tell me. I think I'm ready for Ruck Hell to be in the mix. Yeah. Um, even though it's going to be an absolute disaster. Yeah. Um, but like I was saying earlier, I just felt like, well, first of all, I think it did have a little bit of that feeling of it being old at this point. I know. Kind of sad. Like Andy's worst nightmare. They have all talked about it like so much on all yeah. these different outlets that this it's almost has like, been such a minute to minute scandal. Yeah. Since the very first TMZ headline dropped. It was like James commented, Ariana's yeah. brother commented. Now Billy Lee said something. Yeah. Da, da, da. Like it's, you know, we've been following so closely that watching something that was filmed in March isn't honestly particularly as thrilling as you would want. Yes. It's almost like they should have done it live, like Love is Blind style, even though that was a disaster. But yeah, but they should have. I mean, yeah, it is it is a little outdated now, you know, from what we've learned already. I, I mean, there were some facts that I pointed out that I like, I really enjoyed, which I guess, I think we'll get to them, like where I was like kind of blown away a little bit. But for the most part, yeah, we're watching them all fight about something that we've lived with for months yeah. now. And so, yeah, maybe that sucked a little bit of its power. Right. Because like the finale, while that was older than the reunion it was footage that we had never seen so it was exciting because it was the insider look at how they're living and their pure shock at what had just happened yeah but the reunion was filmed both after a while after they found out and two months ago for yeah. us <laughs> yeah so it's like living in this area in the middle where it's kind of like not fresh on either end yeah i think maybe andy needs to do like like a bravo clubhouse like little like catch up or something you know like with the principals yeah just say what's changed or yeah. whatever but i, I guess mean, it was just this was too powerful of a thing to happen that they bravo couldn't keep it to themselves which typically like when you watch a new a new jersey reunion nobody cares that much no. what's going to happen you like you'll get it when you get it totally this just couldn't be contained yeah by the bravo reunion <laughs> container you know right what I mean? yeah like they maybe had to consider it differently but you know it was exciting james and lala being a uh, statler and waldorf on the edge there was yes. pretty funny yeah it was great they they um they start up uh, you know, immediately they are, <laughs> they, they, they do not want Sandoval to have one moment of uh, any explanation or any sympathy yeah. or, or any, uh, they won't give him a second of, of, of validation for anything he says. Lala is basically screaming like, shut up the yeah. entire time. Like, I don't want to hear for you, which actually was sort of annoying. Cause I do want to hear what Sandoval has to right. say. Like there are so many instances where they're <laughs> shutting him up and Andy's like, Hey, I, I have to hear what he well, he'll says be like, here. He'll be like, Tom, what did you think about this? And he'll be like, I think. And they'd be like, no one gives a fuck what you think. Yeah. And it's like, well, why are we here then? And they're like, don't bring up Kristen. Don't bring yeah. up Kristen. It's like, well, she was sort of relevant there. You yeah. know, like they were just, they were, I mean, understandably, they are just so fired <laughs> up. James especially was like a missile pointed at Sandoval for yeah. everything he said. And it was, you know, 
the button was set to launch for anything Sandoval <laughs> said. It starts out, I, I feel like this is towards the beginning, mm-hmm. so maybe a good place to start unless I miss anything, but it starts out with Andy asking Sandoval, you know, Sandoval looks like, um, you know, I, I, this could be whatever victim, like he, he set this up, but he does look <laughs> fucked up. I yeah. mean, he, he looks, he's like shaken. Yeah. He, he and, and Andy said it at the daddy diaries, uh, signing, which yeah. everybody booed and got mad at for some reason. But they yeah. said, he said, when I spoke to Sandoval for the one-on-one, he looked like a shell of himself. Yeah. He looked sick. He looked unwell. He looked shaken. He was, he was nervous and shaking and everybody's like, boo. It's it's like, like, well, that's just true. <laughs> yeah, he so. said, that's just, I'm sorry. That's, <laughs> that's literally what happened. Well, it's like when he walks out, like first, you know, Ariana comes out and everyone's oh, right. like, oh my God, like, yes, like that's a revenge dress if I've ever seen one. And right. Andy's like, she's like Princess Diana. And then Sandoval comes out and Ariana's like, well, he looks like shit. Yeah. Which is, and Lala's like, I hate him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, which was great. Like she, she's earned that for sure. I was thinking, see, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to say this up top. For some reason, when it gets so nasty like that, maybe it's just, I'm not sympathizing with Sandoval. I'm just saying, like, I want to know what's going on. Me too. And I'm like, I turn into, like, I'm not trying to be self-righteous or act like I don't watch this for chaos and trash elements. Mm -hmm. But I turn into this, my brain starts to go like, what happened to him that made him do this? Like, yeah. What kind of a broken person would do that? Yeah. And I started to think about how, even though Ariana hates him so much, I bet you it really hurt her to see him look like that. Yeah. I, like, I bet, I bet how so can too. you take care of someone, which she says, you know, that she did for so long? Like, yeah. she watched his back for so many years. Yeah. And then you, he walks in and he looks like a fucking ghost. And it's just like so fucked up, which he should be, whatever. Yeah, right. But like, even though she's like, ha ha, you lose, you look like shit and I look amazing. That's got to be like a weird experience. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the whole thing, you know, must feel so weird to Ariana. Like yeah. to be in this like place of prominence for something that was like awful and horrible. Yeah. Like being cheated on by your, the person you thought you were going to, you know, love forever. Um, yeah, the minute Sandoval, like Andy was like... Sandoval would you like to say something to the group just as we start and Sandoval is instantly crying which you know I'm not going to judge whether he was being performative or not but right. James judges him yeah. instantly and says stop crying <laughs> yeah. man up stop you're crying you're not at the Oscars <laughs> the Oscars he just he, he doesn't want Sandoval to, to say one thing which I guess is understandable but it's not good from a viewing experience right. to just have someone be cut off every time they're trying to explain what happened right you know? it's like then maybe they should have kept him separate too if, you know, if it's never going to be possible for yeah, him to talk. I, but I, I was really, really, this is just a general note before. I don't know how like specific we're going to get, but yeah. Schwartz's uh, demeanor. <laughs> I am like on Schwartz watch now after this season. Like I, no one has ever um, changed like personality been more altered than Sandoval, or I mean, than Schwartz. Well, I don't know. I guess we could say Sandoval, but Schwartz's behavior, like at the start of the season and previous seasons to where he's at now, he is fucked up. I know he's gotten so so much horrible stuff has happened. He's done so much horrible stuff, but Schwartz is really, I feel like, uh, he wanted to just finally tell the truth about everything. And it, it does come off like a little, um, you know, rude to Katie at some yeah. points. But I feel like this was Schwartz's opportunity to just tell the truth. I don't want any more lies. I don't yeah. want any more accusations about me being duplicitous. And yeah. this. I, I kind of liked him just, I'm not covering for anybody yeah. anymore. And, and yeah, so I just thought his performance was really interesting. And I could just tell unless I have the worst read on him, which I had the worst read on Sandoval. But I could just tell that this had fucked him up uh-huh. and he was trying to make amends. Right. Do you, do you think so? Did you feel that way at all? I mean, he also like wasn't really able to get a word in edgewise. Yeah. Um, and like everything he said got an eye roll, which may be fair enough. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's interesting to see him not just go along with sandoval completely yeah um but yeah he was uh, at the very beginning andy when they're getting together he's like sandoval were you silent or were you silenced yeah so and he's funny. like both andy and yeah. he was like what does he say he's like what a fucked up situation andy yeah 
<laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, I can, t- I mean, I think he is really, you know, pretty affected by this whole thing. Yeah. And I feel like he just wanted the timeline to be out there. I felt like when he was, um, like, I didn't understand the, the, you know how Lala said, you guys didn't get your timelines uh, yeah. straight before you got in here? Because Schwartz admits that he found out in late August, Mm -hmm. which is the story that Sandoval told Andy right before, you know, in the Uh one-on-one. So Sandoval told Andy that it happened in August, but then when they go out there on stage, Sandoval is pretending like he didn't tell Schwartz that it happened in in late August. But so was he just like trying to defend Schwartz to not implicate Schwartz for longer than than Schwartz needed to be implicated? Because he was already honest about the timeline. Right. But yeah, he said he told Schwartz in late January. So... Yeah, it was weird. I don't know. It was confusing. And then Schwartz kind of bungled the way he talked about it, saying that Sandoval told Schwartz that he confided in Raquel. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not interesting information that he talked to her. I'm like, that's not what we're talking about here. And Katie like, said, get yeah. on with it. Yeah. She, goes, she goes, where is the story going? She's like, when say- did they fuck? <laughs> yeah. Get to the point. And there's so much confusion over, did this happen after Guy's Night at the Mondrian or... They keep saying it, it. He always introduces it as that. <laughs> I know what is going on. And I'm on like, there? why don't you just skip the Mondrian part and just it's, say that night at the Abbey yeah, when uh, Ali saw us, we fucked that night. Yeah, I don't know why he has to period. pinpoint that Mondrian guys. Night. It's like it gets something. Very, happened. I'm still confused. I know because the word jumble is always so. I like literally week after week write down what each of them say, and I'm still like, wait, what? Yeah. So I guess the timeline is he had the most beautiful talk he says the most beautiful talk with Raquel at Saddle Ranch which if you can imagine a beautiful (laughs) talk happening at Saddle Ranch that's you know you know it's going to be a good conversation then that opened the floodgates to his feelings of being you know loving her her or whatever and then the next night at the Abbey is when they kissed and when they made love in the car I guess is what he's saying right yeah so it's and then and then he kept saying then we stopped we stopped (laughs) Oh, we put a pause on this. This is the worst thing I've ever done. We I didn't love open whenever it. Andy like asks if it went on longer than that. He's always like, "No, yeah, like absolutely not." And I'm like, "Well, it did later. So why are you acting so shocked?" And also, he's then, he's a, that. then he says, "No, but then I don't know what it was, but life is beautiful happened." And they say September 2022. Yeah. So late August, <laughs> you put a huge pause on it. September, <laughs> a right? A few weeks, right? Yeah. It's like it, you didn't and really that pause. That footage of them at the festival is so damning. Like his head, like in her crotch. And then Andy loves that anecdote about him being at BravoCon with Sandoval oh singing to them in the front row. It's Kyle Cook, <laughs> Ariana, Raquel, and Andy. And Andy just keeps talking about it, referencing that he goes, story. What was it like seeing your partner and your mistress standing next to each other celebrating you? He was like, did you like get off on it? And he's like, no, <laughs> he goes, my God, no. It's like, that's the, and he just said the worst thing in the world. My God, no. Um, oh, and then the whole time we're not, we didn't reference this yet, but the whole time Raquel is locked in a star wagon by herself. She's, she's that's fucking iconic. Yeah, I know. I know. It's she's like, like Rapunzel of North Hollywood. Yeah. For some reason I thought, I, I don't know what I thought, but it's just, it's just funny that they had to get a trailer because it, the studio was not big enough to accommodate the legal request of 600 right. feet or whatever so she had to be in the star wagon that's kind of shocking like how small is this place yeah but my theory is that she wasn't actually watching the reunion she was watching another television show because her reactions Jerry Springer. are Springer. her reactions are so muted and she's watching gilmore girls yeah, she's, going, <laughs> she's like she's shocked by it um it, it just her they she gave them nothing when they pointed to her right. reaction i have no idea what the hell raquel is ever thinking do you think they even needed to do the star no. wagon or they thought it would be so funny to cut to it i think they i think they wanted to provide us with um <laughs> hatred because of how she is reacting to I it. I will say she got more booze by far at the in the uh sample environment that we created. Uh Sandoval got booze, but Raquel got like major booze. Oh, oh at at Junkyard Dog. Yeah. Oh yeah, Raquel gets yeah, booed to oblivion. Um but I I I would boo Sandoval more, right? But in general, I'm yeah, saying no, the audience yeah, people are more mad was at way louder for Raquel. But yeah. I don't know if that's because like that was the first time they saw her. But anyways, um, so yeah, they uh, she they do a little snippet of her interview with Andy, and she's wearing her little black or gray 
blazer like she's going to court right um and ariana also shares the text that rock hall sent to her oh, oh right and then uh her reply ariana's reply was just shut the fuck up you fucking rat yeah i love it <laughs> and her her apology was I know this doesn't mean anything, but I fucked up so bad. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was like, I'm so, so sorry. Yeah. That's awful. I would have sent a video message just like we did to Sonia. Like Sandoval when he cries up to Sheena. <laughs> yeah. You can't just do it in a text. You got to send a full blown you know, video <laughs> message. But yeah, Ariana did not like that apology. Yeah. Um, I'm just like going through this. There's only a couple things before they get started. But yeah. Well, I'm glad you have it like, uh, you know, chronological. in chronological order. Um, Sandoval tells Andy that they had issues and that he felt like Ariana's gay BFF, which I'm like, I thought that you felt ousted from being part of her and her gay BFFs relationship. True. Yeah. You know? That was, yeah, that, that was a new detail he has added <laughs> into this. I'm like, if you were like her gay BFF, you guys would be doing great because yeah, you would she's, fit right in. Yeah. She's loving life. <laughs> like you'd be watching love Island, listening to Beyonce. Exactly. Like he, yeah, he, that was, that was a new way for him to phrase it. I did think it was interesting though, when they have that unseen footage about him mm -hmm. complaining about them, not getting, deep yeah. into their relationship that was from christina kelly's <laughs> iconic yes heart spring is that what it's called yeah launch yeah he it must have been after the lala and ariana conversation yeah. when he came over and he got fully dismantled with uh -huh. his lie about labor day when he was taking his shit. Uh, his shit um and it then it seems like he ran off to a producer and compl complained that ariana and him don't go in hard enough that yeah. was kind of interesting to see I yeah mean, not I, I it doesn't justify anything no but it's just interesting that i like to see conversations they're having with like the no, showrunners like a good pull for yes. them but i also was like actually i mean it from the way i understood it actually he was being uh you know i think he was saying what most casts would appreciate yes the thing that people get in trouble for is not sharing and he was saying out loud it's not fair for us not to share yes so i was like that's actually defensible yeah any other season and any other you know not uh, this horrific cheating scandal but we would have applauded him yeah. for wanting to show more yeah of his life on camera um yeah. so i don't know um yeah ariana she was saying to andy that he brought that up and she was saying that she thought from her point of view that she was always sharing everything and i'm like we kind of have talked about that you guys didn't like that's why the miami girl that's why you know a few other things were just you guys kept it tight which is fine but it was interesting that in that specific circumstance she was like saying that she always gives it all yeah and and we sort of we saw scenes this season where tom was sort of going in you know you could say like sort of like crying and doing all this stuff and ariana wasn't getting to the the depth of what he was actually discussing uh, you know which might have been that she doesn't want to delve you know that deep into the relationship on cam camera even when sandoval was sort of like prying her into those yeah. situations um but yeah, just just I guess interesting, you know, sure. to note. Um, yeah. So then everyone starts coming in. Uh, Lisa comes in. She says, "I'm dressed like a gladiator." She's like, "I think I'm gonna need it." <laughs> like she's still, you can tell, like considers herself like the MVP. Yes. Like coming in. Yes. She's like, "Who's ready for me?" We should add music to that scene, like <laughs> yeah. um, the Rocky theme song or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that'd be kind of fun for Lisa's entrance. Mm -hmm. Um. Sheena's wearing her little Ugg slippers. Yeah, Love that, cool. that. And then Sandoval comes in last. I wrote down dead man walking. It's just <laughs> totally yeah. fucked. Yeah, and they, the way they look at him is just like, you know, obviously the most hated man on television. Yeah. And then, so the very first snark from James is um, they're going through and Andy says, Schwartz, this is your first reunion not sitting next to Katie. Like, how does that make you feel? And he's like, oh yeah, you're right. Like, that's crazy. And James whispers well, not whispers but says to lala he goes it didn't cross his mind which which is so true <laughs> you could just tell that uh schwartz was going wait what are you talking about like do i normally sit next to her like he didn't care yeah. at all 
No. Um, well, they're usually like at odds right. anyways. Right. So it's not like they were a support system to each other during yeah. the reunion. But James really had Schwartz's number there. It's yeah. Like, that is so true. And then Andy asks uh, James if he's the number one guy in the group. And he's like, it's not hard to compete for number one when you're working with Schwartz and a clown. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, James was bringing it. <laughs> okay. And then what I'm just going with my notes, but yeah. Um, Sheena, they ask him about Brock, how he's doing. She says that he just cut all of his hair off and Sandoval for the first time in maybe at first and only time of the whole reunion, like is lit from within and goes, no way, really? Yeah. Well, he's <laughs> it, a, a part of his brain, uh, like, you know, just slipped and he's like, oh, if uh, on a normal reunion in a normal <laughs> circumstances, I would totally be stoked that Brock had cut his hair. And then like he cared so much about it that it like brought him out of his coma. <laughs> yeah. And Sheena doesn't give him anything. Doesn't no. even, like look at him. Yeah. Um, they did in a little montage. They included the, I can't believe. I know. That was so sweet to see. <laughs> I, I love that. They want to play that clip like anytime they can have it for the rest yeah. of. Do you think that I can't believe, et cetera, et cetera, is the new uh, Tom Crash's car? Uh, uh, yes. And then in, 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 in Pasadena, <laughs> it was snowing, snowing and he flipped his car. Flipped his for car. sure. Right. This has had more impact. Right. Because <laughs> when you hear. When you hear the words, I can't believe, you just have to finish that iconic sentence, which I can't even remember. <laughs> I, it's the new, my wife. Yeah, I can't believe. <laughs> Tom Sandoval. <laughs> <laughs> they need, I, I want to know, they have to peek behind the curtain and tell us what happened there. Did Lisa just tell Ken that this happened or the day yeah. before? And then Ken thinks it's so interesting that he wants to bring it up again in front of Katie. Like, I wonder if it'll come up when we get to that ooh. point of the reunion. Yeah. Maybe when Ken Todd like brings out, you know how they do shots and Peter With and Peter, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Andy could really quickly ask. Remember when they put like penne for it's yeah. all about the pasta yeah. in little shot glasses and Sheena like sucks it out. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. Cause she doesn't want to like mess up. Right. They don't give him forks or yeah. anything. Yeah. That was so funny. They loved it's all about the pasta. Yeah. Um, I just wrote down, we already talked about Sandoval crying, but yeah. Um, James, <laughs> I don't mean this as uh, to be glib for anyone that has Tourette's, but it feels like James has like zinger Tourette's where he's just like crocodile tears pussy. Like he like can't yeah. stop. Yeah. He, he <laughs> says he calls him a pussy. I'd say 20 times it almost unprompted. <laughs> it, it feels it, like he, it's truly like out of his control how he's responding like yeah he can't not yeah he yeah f for sure it, it, it felt like that's definitely where the poo poo head thing uh <laughs> is gonna come from it's just this he just wants to dismantle him he's he, he's like how he felt at the schwartz you know beach party when he just couldn't think anymore he's just yeah. filled with rage and i guess that's what's going on but yeah him and lala had such a fun dynamic because they're both the most cutting you know, yeah. of anyone. Yeah. There. Putting them together. It was very funny. Yeah. I always love when someone says crocodile tears. That's a classic <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. So he keeps going back and forth about everything. Uh, Sandoval's crying. He starts to say like, I appreciate everyone being there for Ariana. And he's like to Ariana, he's like, I love you. I'm sorry. And um, James is like, nah, he's like, that didn't hit for me. And Lala's like, I didn't even listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, that was great. That was that was amazing. I loved it. And then we get into this whole piece of Lala popping off. Oh yeah, this was taking LVP to the brink. Yeah, this 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 was so good. This was amazing because when somebody stands up to Lisa, it's like you are watching to see how this goes down. Lisa does not get confronted. Yeah, very often. Lisa, it's or, shocking. Lala says. Lala opens the floodgates by saying that Tom Sandoval is a dangerous man. Yeah. She says, if anybody can just lie next to you and be cheating on you and say they're still in love with you and doing this thing to you, you're a dangerous person. Yeah. And Lisa, that like she cannot stand for one second that Tom Sandoval, her business partner, would be called a dangerous man. It's yeah. just it's too strong. For right. Her. Yeah. So she started out by saying Sandoval is Randall. She's like, give it 10 years. He is Randall Emmett. She said she was saying that they were the same because she couldn't keep Randall home. But then after shit hit the fan, she couldn't get him out of the house, which is what happened with Sandoval. Um, but but yeah. what does that really, what does that mean? Like he was partying. He was like unaccounted for 
going out all night, was never home. And then when she wanted him to be gone, he was like, I'm not fucking leaving. So it's just like it's just like an <laughs> awful thing to do. It's just like when you're wanted, you're not there. When yeah. they don't want you, that's when you're going to yeah. show up all the time. You're it's like, just like blocking them. You're yeah. like, I'm in control. I do what I want. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, And then, yeah, she's like, people need to be warned about him. He's a dangerous human being. And LVP is like... That's a ridiculous stance. Yes. And Lala says, I didn't ask for anyone else's opinion. And LVP goes, you have my opinion. And Lala goes, that's great. I reject it. And I literally like screamed. I'm like, I think I'm such a cuck for the hierarchy that I'm like, we can't. I'm like, the queen mum. No, like we have La to La honor stop. the queen. That's why it's so <laughs> thrilling to I'm see like, it. I'm like, kiss the ring. And, and Lala... <laughs> Lala is so deferential to Lisa. I mean, like on the scale of people who treat Lisa like a queen, Lala is way up there. So right. to see her just hand it back to Lisa. I mean, I feel like Lisa was dead to her once she kind of gave her shit for Randall. Remember that kitchen conversation at Villa Rosa? Oh, uh, yeah. I where sort of... she was like, you really didn't like see this coming. And she was kind of like pissed that Lisa was oh, damn. blaming her or not really a hundred percent on her side or yeah, something. I, I gotta rewatch that scene because that that's interesting. I feel like she flipped a switch at that point. Yeah, I've um, never seen Lala treat Lisa like that and it was warranted. I mean Lisa it yeah Lisa I, you know I, I said this to you and I'll just say it, you know, officially, but I think Lisa is only taking this um sort of, you know, waffling stance or, or you know not being fully definitive because of her business with sandoval mm-hmm. um you know she's a business partner with with them lisa cares about her businesses almost more than anything yeah I mean, she is like a business person like above all and so the fact that tom sandoval would be called a dangerous <laughs> man and she'd be co you know yeah it, own a bar with him i think that that Lisa won't stand for that. And right. I think that her defense of Tom, apart from, you know, her knowing him for 15 years right. or whatever and, and basically defending him, I think that she just can't let a business be affected by this. Right. You know? Well, I think she also kind of, she takes all of this with a grain of salt because as comes up in the reunion, this kind of a thing has happened yeah. like 20 times and she's had to deal with it every single time, which we all agree that this one is worse but Lisa's kind of like, yeah, like that's fucked. But like life goes on. Like yeah. men have always cheated. This is not a new yeah, thing. Yeah, she says like, plenty of men have, have, you know, cheated on their wives and gone to bed with right. them or whatever. And, and, and Lala's like, not having it. Lala is freshly triggered off of her totally. own circumstances. And like, <laughs> it does feel a little bit like, I don't know. I'm like, I think Sandoval is a fucking asshole i think he's having a midlife crisis i think he's selfish i think he's clueless do i think he's a dangerous man i don't know what do you think (laughs) you know i was gonna say it and i sort of i couched my take because it's just so hard to say anything you know positive about (laughs) sandoval but i think if i'm just being fully honest with myself and honest with our beautiful wonderful (laughs) listeners i have to say i do think Lala calling him dangerous might be a bridge too far. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I, 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 she means duplicitous. She means that, uh, how can you trust someone that would ever lie to you and lie to your face? Cause you can't trust any, you know, uh, anything else they do because right. they can be so, what's that called? Two faced. Yeah. But I don't know. There's a, there's a difference between two faced and like a serial killer or right. whatever. She's, she's, she's basically getting into the territory where like you, like he might, murder someone right right i mean that's yeah. what danger dangerous <laughs> yeah, means sure. and and i don't know what randall did i still have not looked up because i don't like care enough about we have randall to watch that randall scandal yeah like, like we'll watch it i just i i've not cared about what right. randall did it, right you know I, I mean i care about it but i'm just like i wrote randall off right i'm not well, I don't he even... was also like an active scammer yeah like he was like a bad man across the board and we never and liked everyone him. knew that and lala was the only one defending him and yeah. getting him into the group and then now she's the one who's like I, no now you can't ever be friends with him it's like we would have never even been friends with him if you didn't bring this guy into our lives right. obviously and i'm like sandoval whatever yeah i think he's i would say he's the opposite of dangerous he's harmless he's his own biggest enemy like he fucks himself over by making the wrong decision time and again like he also can't sandoval he also can't 
speak articulately no. and, and explain himself. He is, he is. Oh a, my God. I, he said so much dumb shit. I know. He was saying like, I know you are, but what am I? He was going to the, <laughs> down to the basics of his language. He, 30% of his phrases are like coined phrases, right. like tropes, cliches that yeah. he's like, he has this just wheelbarrow of cliches that he's brought all around with him and he starts to say the same phrases over and over again he brought one out which i'm just gonna say it now i think you're gonna bring <laughs> I know it up what but you're gonna say. he said james <laughs> pees on a fire hydrant like a dog and this is his hydrant and did I, he mean raquel <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i i um i made a note of it to ask you specifically what he meant because i don't even know what prompted that at all i've watched the reunion now three times he pees on a fire hydrant like a dog, and that's his hydrant. Raquel is his hydrant. It's very... He was pretty, he was pretty um, actually gracious to Raquel before he knew about the cheating. He was the one who told Lala to right. let up on her. Yeah. So it's not... This isn't his, like... <laughs> he also said <laughs> to, regarding Lala, like, being up her own ass, said, I fart Mozart, everybody. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking he, about? He, I have no clue where, where, what, all of a sudden he's saying the worst stuff. I might just be the new light we're looking at him, but I fart Mozart peeing on fire hydrants. He was like the last person I would, I don't, he, he said a really bad comeback to Lala. I forget what it was. You probably haven't noted down, he's but he was just full at that. Like I was just uh, listening to a different podcast talking about the social network and they were saying, you know, obviously Aaron Sorkin wrote that. So they make Mark Zuckerberg, like Aaron Sorkin makes, uh, Mark Zuckerberg sound like the most articulate, like yep. zinger, yep. like mo- badass motherfucker yeah. ever. And I love that movie. And I, it, for the storyline, it works great because you want in that specific instance, you're on his side of that. He invented Facebook or yep. whatever, knowing that he's an asshole. Mm-hmm. But then when you actually see Zuckerberg, like before Congress or whatever, he's, he's such a dud. Yeah. And I'm like, I want the version of this because the thing is like James and Lala and like a lot of our cast do have the wherewithal to deliver oh, yeah. on the fly in Sandoval. I'm like, I kind of wish that he could because I want, that's the thing with Raquel. That's why it's going to be such a disaster when she comes on stage because she has less ability oh. than anyone to speak so, a sentence. So them two defending their <laughs> stance is going to be so bad. They're barely going to be able to say, you know, three words together. Yeah. And that's why it's like, I feel like Sandoval gets an even worse rap because he's really bad at articulating himself and yeah. he's so self-righteous, but then he doesn't do a great job at articulating what he's talking about. Yes. And a lot of the time, historically, I'm like, I get what you're going for and I agree with you, but like, you're fucking annoying. I know. Yeah, and you said it weirdly. And Ariana, I think, said in the Call Her Daddy interview that uh, that Tom Sandoval struggles with, like, explaining himself. And right. you see it now. He's he's struggling to talk. It's Yeah, with James and Lala in the corner, you're just totally fucked. You're like, done. You Schwartz can't. is good, though, at, at uh, explaining himself. Yeah. He likes to be... He's very long-winded, but yes. he eventually gets to Which an articulate point. Which, in this uh, reunion, there's no time for long wind. No. Like, he was trying to say something at one point, and... Because Ariana, I think it's right after this, Ariana's saying Andy's trying to get to the bottom of the state of their relationship and Ariana's getting pissed off because she's like, it's irrelevant what was going on in our relationship because he cheated. It doesn't matter, blah, 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 which I'm like, yes, like ethically it doesn't matter but for the sake of us picking apart every detail of what happened it's necessary do you mind if he does speak just so (laughs) we can hear like what this person is saying about what they did it's like it's sort of important yeah and then james is like it's pointless yeah yeah. and then schwartz is like we're doing a reunion it's like therapy and she's like it's not like therapy and he's like okay (laughs) oh god (laughs) Yeah. yeah um but yeah, uh, Sheena says she wasn't suspicious, didn't think anything was going on until Lala told her that she was suspicious. Right. Um, and then this is when the Tom and James shit goes down. Right. Andy says, why didn't you come clean to Ariana right away? And uh, James goes, and your friends. Do you remember who I am, Tom? And Sandoval's like, yeah, you're James motherfucking Kennedy, which was weird. 
Yeah, like uh, um, spiteful. Like he, yeah, he, like, he is. Yeah, we all know. Who, like you think you're so important, kind of a thing. Because I guess you know, obviously James just like wrote off Sandoval immediately, was disparaging him and saying like throw tomatoes. Obviously right. warranted completely. So Tom Sandoval is obviously hates James Kennedy right. right now. Yeah, Ariana's like they were like brothers, and Tom's like we were like brothers. He's like I talk to you like once a month, dude. And then everyone goes insane. It's like what about Rochella? What about this? What about that? Yeah. Um once a month is not too bad for a friend. I mean, <laughs> like Yeah, you know, they I- have history. It's not necessarily relevant your exact current state but more what you've been through together yeah but a classic like or i i guess i i find it very interesting when we find out that the relationships aren't as close as they appear on actual vanderpump rules yeah. ariana made a comment that she said lala and katie are not in her inner circle so they didn't yeah. have a good vantage point for their relationship and that then hearing hearing that james and Sandoval weren't actually as close as they appear. I mean, I never bought that Raquel engagement thing. I never, it's like he really paid what four grand yeah. production didn't cover that. At one point, I don't remember exactly where this information came about. Maybe it was on, it might've been Howie Mandel, oh, yeah. but he said that he only paid for the fireworks. Yeah, I know. It's like this, this whole thing, they just, that was, that was just like a storyline that, right. that Sandoval was so generous that he paid for half of it or whatever, but that's not indicative of their friendship. I've seen their friendship over the years. He was, he was always defending James. James did treat Sandoval like a older brother. I don't know yeah. why the hell Sandoval is trying to negate their friendship now. Well, that's what he did to Sheena too, that he had to apologize for. I know. Like it's he's like, trying to like delete everything and be like, not accountable for anything else also they're so busy so once a month like you're you're hitting up james kennedy and you guys are talking (laughs) it's like that's not that bad i don't think this is the right course of action for sandoval to like be like we were never friends and obviously james shouldn't be this affected by it it's like james is like this should this affected him you know this makes sense that he's hurt right yeah he's like um James says you've been like a big bro yeah and Tom's like well that's what like you called me like that was on you yeah and then James is like you've always been an opportunist and Tom's like opportunist you fucked uh Kristen to get on the show and then he's like five days after we broke up and then James is like when I was 21 and then Tom's like you used my condom (laughs) And then James yeah, starts like lunging over yeah. and Raquel, they cut to Raquel and her face is so funny. What was it? She's like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so, I, yeah, it's so silly. And then this is when they get in a scuffle and Andy is like, my cards. Yeah. So Andy, <laughs> what, I, I, I need to watch it more because it, there was so much going on, but Andy is the one who gets, gets James off of, out of there. Right. I mean, James isn't yeah. going to actually fight him. Right. But Andy gets him out of there. Andy loses all of his cards. He says, that's when he says, stay in your seat, right? Yeah, stay in your fucking chair. That's all you have to do is just stay in your chair. Yeah, he's like, your bar's going down the drain, you backstabbing hoe. And then this, that's when Tom's like, get in my face again. I'll fuck you up, motherfucker. I, and he's like, James is like, I'll fuck you up right now, bitch. I don't like ever <laughs> seeing people fight because violence is never, ever, <laughs> ever good ever no but do you think they would have an interesting fight if they did i'm very curious james seems very confident james has been saying all season <laughs> how many asses he can kick he said he could kick schwartz's ass yeah he said i'm more ripped than you to sandoval yeah. he said he could really beat him up but you know i mean james is bigger than we thought when we uh, saw him i know he's like six foot three he's like yeah. i think he, yeah he's way bigger than you think yeah the camera like it makes James look a little smaller for some reason, right? Yeah. No, you always read him as scrawny. I mean, he used to be pretty scrawny. They actually look the same days, size but... exactly when you saw him like lined up. You know, yeah. like they kind of look like the same height, same build. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, Could interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't want to see them fight. No, they're gonna do like the Tanya Harding. Like they're gonna end up doing the like trash celebrity boxing. You think in they Vegas. would? <laughs> Maybe in like 20 years. It's going to be like the wrestler uh, set Bravo Con yeah. in like 50 years. You They're think- all just like old and like smoking and like unhealthy. So you think we'll be at Bravo Con in 20 years, right? And see that? Yeah. But it's going to be in like Reno. Yeah. It'll be in Reno. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. They can't be in Vegas anymore. Sandoval and James Kennedy will have squashed it like years ago, oh, 10 yeah. years. Imagine what we have to behold yeah. that we don't know yet. 
Yeah, I think we're going to behold <laughs> Jax and Brittany coming back in. Jax, it, it's, the first episode is going to be at Schwartz's house. Sandoval is living now with Schwartz or spending a lot of <laughs> time there. Or maybe they have an apartment together. Yeah. And then they're going to hear a ding-dong doorbell. And it's going to be Jax at the door. And Jax is going to say, Sandoval, you fucked up, buddy. But <laughs> tell me what happened. And then Jax is going to be the bridge to getting Sandoval to... Uh, different events with the group and then slowly but surely Sandoval will have to work his way back into the yeah. fray. Do you think he could do it? I think if history's taught us anything, it could happen. Yeah, I wouldn't bet against it. No. No, I'm I'm down. <laughs> so so then after uh Sandoval says, Oh fuck you what motherfucker, which we yeah. got to hear in perfect, beautiful, um, <laughs> pure curse yeah. words, it happens again. Yeah. James gets up, mm -hmm. starts screaming. He says, I'm way more ripped than you. I could definitely fight you. Yeah. And then does James have to go to the restroom? He takes a yeah. certified... Uh, he, he's, yeah, a certified turtle piss. <laughs> After Andy tells him to stay in the fucking chair, James is like, he said it first, Andy. And I'm like, these are literal children. He's like, he said it first. Yeah. And then he's like, I'm going to the restroom. And then when he starts to go to the bathroom, he goes, pussy bitch. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, then yeah. That's when we get worm with a mustache. Yes. And Sandoval's comeback to that is, you've had the same haircut for five years. Nine. Oh, he said nine? Oh, he might have said five. I wrote okay. down nine, unfortunately, because <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a really long time. But he goes, it works for me. It works for me, bro. Yeah, that was like kind of sweet. And I don't <laughs> think James should should change his hair. What would he have? Long hair? Yeah, no, it's good. What, would he have a buzz cut? No, I like it. He wouldn't have a mullet like Kyle. No, that would be bad. What, what, what other hair could he have? Yeah, honestly, Sandoval's hair journey is a warning against changing your hairstyle. Yeah, but I always sort of liked, I mean, back before I knew that Sandoval was a little bit of a stinker, I only, I liked that one hairstyle where he had that gray streak in it and it was a little long and then he got so much shit for it that he buzzed his head. That was insane. You didn't and like that hair? Hit the way he dressed during that period was insane. He was really it feeling was like himself. like Dune vibes. Yes, he was wearing um, <laughs> like, yeah, he was wearing long like sweaters tied around his waist a little bit right yeah I, he was real that was like he that was the prototype for what he became he was like feeling his rock star energy but the fans wouldn't let him do it yeah. so he like scaled back and yeah. then this is him and now like, he's like harry styled pilled he's just like gucci -fied. yes um, so yeah then the fire hydrant remark which we don't understand i guess it's about no raquel is this when james iconically tells andy cohen that he's a ugly fuck <laughs> like we already um, talked about is that when he comes back Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, but they warn him when he comes out. So there's a, the moment before that is Lala kind of acting like, um, you know, she's like, I don't even remember what she says, but she tells him to stop going back and stop pulling out the history books because it's irrelevant. Yeah. Um, and then uh, <laughs> James comes back and he goes, they're like, all right, but seriously be quiet. And he's like, I'll be quiet to Tweedledee and Tweedle Little Dick. And Schwartz is like, am I Tweedledee? Pretty funny. <laughs> I thought that was funny, I right? Laughed. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, and then this is the ugly fuck. Did you just call me an ugly fuck? That was kind of funny to hear Andy think legitimately that James had just <laughs> said that imagine? to him. No, like that would be the most shocking moment yeah, and he's of all like, time. You're handsome. He's the ugly little fucking clown. Yeah. And then Lisa's like, seriously? Like basically telling him if he doesn't get his shit together, he'll be in the dressing room and not out here. And that's when he goes, I'll be sent for time out. I'll get a spanked bottom at lunchtime, Andy. Lisa, I'll get a spanked bottom, right? <laughs> yeah. And then he starts shaking his little rump, begging for it to be spanked by Lisa. Um, yeah, that was interesting. He's in he's in full blown. Like you said, he cannot think Anything other than wanting to dismantle, you know, Sandoval completely. He just wants to throw every barb at him that he can and fight him. Yeah. I, mean, I guess he wants to fight him, right? Yeah. Um, Andy asked for like the 50th time, why not come clean? Yes. And, he, <laughs> and, and, then, and then I think Lisa says, this is the million dollar question. Right. Why not just break up with Ariana once this was starting to happen? Yeah. And, you know, he says the same old shit. He was scared. She was going through a lot. And then he says, when would you have told her? And he says that he was talking to his therapist and he was planning to tell her the following Tuesday when they were fully wrapped. Fully wrapped. No more interviews. And because he didn't want her to have to talk about her sandwich 
sandwich shop while she was in distress. <laughs> yeah, and I like that he added the note about uh, the therapist that it was like therapist sanctioned just to right. add more validity exactly. to this like timeline. But I'm like, were, why were they still filming then? Do they do interviews for that long? I think they do post like the interviews are probably the last thing they do at so for they a can season on everything. Yes, like the ones where Sandoval's wearing that like shirt with the polka dots on it. Like mm-hmm. that was, I think, like post last season. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, him just like, oh, I'm thinking about like the show in terms of the show or whatever. It's <laughs> he like fucked up by one week. Yeah, for, like four days. Right. Right. I mean, he, <laughs> and he admitted he just wasn't brave enough to do it. Too. Yeah. I mean, he 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 said it. I just love that he had a date. That's the thing that's interesting about all of this is like. They all have this timeline like Schwartz is like, I checked my text. You text. You told me in late August or whatever. And I'm like, if someone asked me when someone told me something, yeah, I'd be like, I have no fucking clue. Two weeks or two months. You'd have no <laughs> two clue. Two years. Two years. When the <laughs> hell did I last talk to you? I would have. N- yeah, I would have no clue. You'd be like, I'm sorry. I can't help you. I really don't know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So is this when they get into the Schwartz uh, section of it? Yeah. So I found this actually. This was my um, the most entertaining aspect and the most revelatory aspect okay. to me because I really enjoyed finding out that those passive aggressive jokes that Schwartz was making about Raquel were actually real yeah. subconsciously trying to blow the lid on this thing you know yeah but she's still that's the thing that's so confusing is because despite what he says or what anyone says that then when people ask specifics like so you already knew when you said that he's like I guess yeah 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 <laughs> he doesn't remember I feel like if you were walking that close to the sun you would be like making a conscious choice to make that joke and you'd be like should i do it should i do it right and he's like subconsciously i'm like subconsciously what do you mean yeah I you mean, either I, knew or you didn't yeah well i think i feel like in this moment he is trying to tell the truth fully i mean if if you know you all don't agree with me i understand but i think he just that is what he was thinking he said honestly that was my intention i was like letting out this uh yeah this this joke from the tension or to maybe possibly like expose this you know to yeah. like maybe start the the effects of this so sandoval will get his shit together right. and do something about it yeah. so that was interesting and and then he this is where the, the timeline conversation comes into play right yeah um <laughs> they also are they want to know you know was schwartz a decoy and they're saying no and uh that's when lvp is like yeah because <laughs> sandoval's like it wasn't a decoy. It was just, he was like, we really were like, we can't do that again. And so he doesn't really quite explain why he was pushing Schwartz to get with her. But Lisa's like, it's macabre. It's perverse to encourage your friend to make out with someone you've just slept with. Yeah. And Tom's like, I don't think so. You're right. It's like, we know you don't. But <laughs> yeah, like, that yeah, your judgment is fucked up. Yeah, but, but that Lisa was good, says macabre and perverse. Yeah, that was a good Lisa moment. Um. Yeah, and then we get a little bit about um, Lala talking about, she says, uh, Lala says that she saw parallels about how Tom uh, Sandoval was talking about Raquel similarly to how he talked about um, Ariana early on when he was with Kristen and Lisa's like, did you even know him then? Like she's basically like, you don't even go here. Like you're not an OG. Yeah. Really? She goes, it's called television and I watched it. And Lisa and Tom are like, Oh, that's different. That doesn't count. Yeah. It's, that was so (laughs) funny for her to shade Lala that she wasn't a cast member around then. Like that Lisa remembers exactly when Lala started and she wasn't there for the Kristen and Tom era is, it was really funny. Like that she's basically disparaging our read of the situation too. Since we're only viewers. It's It's like, you can, yeah. Yeah. And then Ariana basically has to be like, well, I agree with that. Like, I saw a lot of parallels. Yes, yeah. Ariana um, picks up the mantle of that and says, yes, it is exactly the same. And that, that he couldn't break up with Kristen at the time because the same factors were going yeah, on. dead grandpa. Up, 
concert uh, dates. Concert tickets. Yeah. Um, but she was also saying that, uh, yeah, like he thought I was really cool at the beginning too. Like I didn't have any responsibilities. We would bartend and stay up all night. We would do mushrooms with Schwartz. Wow. I love that we're learning this like full <laughs> mushroom. I'm like, y'all be backstory. doing mushrooms all the time. Yeah. Like we're really getting, <laughs> this is like the mushroom season where they're uncovering all of their past mushroom use. Yeah. Um, and then they bring up Miami girl because yes. um, Lisa, I think it's based off of someone saying like, um, like, her saying that it's different that it was Raquel and then she goes well it was more than just fucking Raquel still shocking to me Miami girl I don't know if we've talked about it, or I guess we talked about it last week but it's like I fully believed Sandoval I fully I and, and I think it would have really affected my opinion of him like almost like in a hero edit way right. where if I would have known that he did cheat on Ariana in their right. early stages even though they weren't exclusive right. I think if knowing that Miami girl was true at the time, I think that would have soured my impression of, of Sandoval. Right. And then there, it wouldn't be this like such extreme fall from grace. Right. You know, like he yeah. was sort of protected from that story by Ariana. Right. And how much do you remember how much later she's coming to the restaurant versus when the act happened? Because by the time she's coming to Sir to say that she did it, yeah. Ariana's like, don't talk to my boyfriend like that. Like she's in full defense yeah. mode, but she's saying that she didn't get mad at him for sleeping with her because they weren't committed yet. But I'm like, how much later was that? There, I feel like there was like, was it? Because reunion season two, they're already together, and Kristen can't stand the sight of them because right. they're holding hands. They're they're yeah. full blown, you know, in loving territory right now. So did Sandoval? Did the did it happen the break between season two and season three? But Maybe. they announced their relationship, but I guess they were an exclusive, which I didn't know that. I thought they started dating officially in season two, and it was just they were on. Right. So yeah, we're gonna have to dig into those deets. I, I, I do want to watch the that. Miami girl scene again just yeah. to see how how they're both lying. I know. They're both lying right That's to her like face. That's like the key of the whole show is like watching people lie after you find out that they were lying. Like even on this new season, them showing Tom when the producer says, have you done anything with Raquel? And he's giggling and he says, no, no. no. And you're like, wow, you motherfucker. Yeah. Like watching Jack's lie in season one when we're doing our Patreons <laughs> and Jack's yeah. lying about getting the girl pregnant in Vegas. And you're like, he's the worst liar in the world. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, they're talking about, uh, Kristen at that time. And everyone's like, no one cares about eight years ago. It doesn't matter. Blah, blah, blah. And Andy's like, I brought it up. Yeah, And also let them mention Kristen. I want to hear about Kristen in this. Yeah, She's it, a part of this it history. Is relevant. If we're talking about the origin of their relationship. So, yeah. Um, and Lala's like, okay, so at the beginning of a relationship, you don't fuck the best friend. But once you're in a committed, like long-term relationship, that's when you fuck the best friend. Yeah. She it's killed like, it there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we're into the uh, Katie Schwartz divorce because Andy was saying how before all of this, the season was kind of predicated on three major breakups. Right. So it was Katie and Tom, uh, uh, Lala and Randall and um, who, uh, who else ever <laughs> uh, who who else are we talking about wait we have Randall oh yeah who was the other breakup oh James yeah James and, and Raquel yeah yeah goddamn Raquel they seem like such like bygone history to me but yeah, yeah I know I know it's like the, <laughs> wait, James and Raquel dated like you don't even remember that but um, um, you know what got short shrift this season by far is the Lala Randall story. Like, yeah. I don't even remember. Like, the fact that they broke up in last, the off season of last seasons, like, Lala, that hasn't been a storyline at all, right. really. I mean, she, it started out in the first episode, she was mad at Schwartz for, like, playing pickleball with him, but I sort of forgot. Right. Like, I know, and there's, like, more interesting details about why she hates all men now because Randall was so bad and scary. Like, I'm like, I want to know. I mean, I guess the thing is she's not allowed to talk about it because they're doing custody so yeah. like she really can't talk about the details i guess that's why yeah we gotta watch that that scandal about randall the randall scandal i want to see him i want to see the scenes where he's calling up bruce willis to be in his movies and paying him a million dollars to be in t five minutes of a scene on a green screen yeah i gotta see that because he makes all those garbage VOD movies, yeah. you know? Yeah, the geezer pleasers. Geezer pleasers, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they're talking about Katie and Schwartz's divorce. She's saying that, um, 
you know, she finally realized that he always prioritized everyone over her, which is true. Yeah, we've seen that. Um, yeah. And he was often. saying, oh, only because of by necessity of the, the moment because of the bar. And he was saying that he wasn't caught off guard by the divorce. Their intimacy had been dwindling. Mm-hmm. It was the hardest part of his life because his dad, his brother were sick, losing all of his money. And then Sheena was saying to Katie, you deserve better. And Schwartz turns her and he goes, no such thing. Better than this? And she just says, yes. Still, though, <laughs> that was a little bit funny. Yeah. Of Schwartz, he's kind of being funny there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yet again, Schwartz is saying, because, you know, Katie is still pissed off that he made out with Raquel. Right. And he says yet again that he wouldn't care if she hooked up inside the group. And he said, if you got drunk and made out with Peter in Mexico. And I was like, actually, that's the first example where I'm like, yeah, I don't think anyone would care. <laughs> yeah. But he uses Peter who it's like, yeah, they've all it's kissed like him the before. Least yeah. Offensive option. <laughs> it's just like, it means nothing. It's sad that kissing Peter means absolutely nothing. Has no weight. Like, on anything. I feel like you would just be like, all right, have it's, fun with that. It's like when Raquel was kissing <laughs> Peter. It just doesn't mean anything, you know? Yeah, um, and then he goes, he always goes too fucking far, and he goes, that kiss was just liberating, and then they cut to the star wagon, and Raquel's smiling. I know, you really wanted to give Raquel that, that she gave you this liberating kiss. I'm just surprised he's still defending that kiss. I mean still justifying it like it just it, it, i don't even think it needs to be said anymore that katie didn't want you to kiss raquel right. she just asked you and at that point even the friend group the tenuous he keeps saying that like what is a friend what constitutes a friend she's right. not actually your friend she's outside <laughs> of the group but once she specifically said don't kiss raquel please and right. raquel knew that too that that whole justification is out right she just specifically please don't kiss raquel yeah. and he still did it well it sounds kind of like uh Katie just learned the hard way that she should have not been friends with him yes. after their divorce. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she just legitimately thought that it maybe with those that one boundary or two boundaries that it could actually work. And, you know, he didn't actually care, which, you know, he didn't care about Katie a lot in the relationship. Right. So it makes sense that he continued this. Is this when they get into that that Joe stuff or is that later? Um, there's a little bit before that. Okay, all right, they, all right. They, I'll save it. Yeah, they just really quickly before that they b- discussed the rumor that Sheena had heard that Sandoval told Raquel that oh. at Coachella that they were in an open relationship. Yeah. And uh, he denies it, but he, yeah, I mean, you can't really trust anything he says and it sounds believable that he would be the one who's spreading that rumor that they're in an open relationship. Yeah. So Sheena said that, that Sandoval said it directly to Raquel. Yes, and someone was there that heard it, or Raquel repeated it to someone else. Oh, okay, yeah, and then yeah, and then Sandoval just like denies it. It's like it's like I don't know, I, I don't know why is he so um, abashed by that, or you know whatever the right word is. I, I, why is he so sh- like that is a bridge too right. far? What 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 the hell? You've done the worst shit in the world, right. and that's you whispering to Raquel that you had an open relationship is like so. You're so appalled that that right. would ever be an option. You've done the worst shit in the world. Right. I don't know. It's kind of weird that he's just like, that's one thing I didn't do. Right. He's just trying to like grasp at straws. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just about Andy's bringing up how everyone in the group is a cheater, which we already know. Oh, he said that's this part where yeah. he's where it's like, how is this different? Um, and then Lala says, um, what is, Lala just says, because it's like, it, this we was his life partner. Your best friend also. Yeah. And like, he's just like, okay, fine. It's different. Yeah. Um, and then Katie's going on about the boundaries and like what she needs from a friend that Schwartz isn't meeting. And he's like, so if I don't live up to your checklist that we can't yes. be friends. And James is like, you're a man. She's a woman. That's the least you can do for like what she's as- asking. And Schwartz is like, that's sexist. Yeah. He's like sexist. And then uh, Sandoval's like, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. It's like, okay, you two <laughs> like, are you aligned are on this. You fucking idiots. Yeah, I know. That was, yeah, like that someone was says like, treat a woman with respect just because she's a woman. And they're like, that's sexist. sexist. <laughs> Dude, what you said is actually like sexist. Have you thought about that? <laughs> Dude, Sandoval's like, yeah, buddy, that was sexist. <laughs> Sandoval comes alive again. Yeah. He's like, like, actually, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was like his moment to defend him. Okay, um, this is the Joe. Okay, but but before that, I just have that we got a little bit of an update. <gasps> I was I was 
um, concerned and confused as to when the Satchel and Katie relationship ended and <laughs> right. how it did. Uh-huh. Andy asks specifically what yeah. America wants to know, the world wants to know, what happened to Satchel. <laughs> We get the definitive answer that Satchel wanted more with Katie and that Katie just didn't think that she was she the right one. She in the bud. And that he is now dating someone else. Yeah. He's happy and that they still text occasionally. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of Satchel, unfortunately. Right. I love that uh, Schwartz was like, I was happy for you. Yeah. Like Satchel, like whatever. <laughs> whatever was happening there with <laughs> Satchel. And then, yeah, Andy asked that question. But um, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't feel like we truly got to know Satchel. Do you feel that way? <laughs> he never spoke. <laughs> don't you think he should have one shot to just either come on the reunion part four or <laughs> they do the thing where usually the husbands on housewives come sit in bar stools behind yeah, the couch but it's that. just him <laughs> and he's behind katie yeah. <laughs> and andy like has he's to like, talk to Sandra. Me. yeah or at least maybe a scene in season 11 where schwartz uh, apologizes for how he behaved at the beach to Satchel mm-hmm. and then Satchel can sort of like forgive him. He could him. zoom in. Yeah. He could push out a cart with a TV like in elementary school. Oh yeah. I, I was thinking or, or are you thinking of the reunion? Yeah. Oh I was thinking next season season 11 <laughs> Schwartz oh, just there, asks there's like a lunch. Yeah if they go to like a bar like they go to Waltz or something they grab a hot dog and Schwartz apologizes for his behavior at the beach they should and then, go to Junkyard Dog. Oh, you're right. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> they should go to Junkyard <gasps> Yeah. Do you think there's any chance in the world that season 11 is going to have a scene at Junkyard Dog where Schwartz brings Satchel and they sort of like start a friendship? I think Satchel will throw a drink in his face. You think? Satchel will be just so <laughs> perturbed by Schwartz's behavior. He'll yeah. still be holding a grudge from how he acted at the beach. Yeah. The beach by far, now that we're like looking back at the season, <laughs> Fury and Sir Alley, Kate, Katie's, you know, uh, seeing red in the alley is, is up there. But I think the beach scene is my favorite scene by far. Just that whole 10 minutes great of, episode. of beauty. Yeah. Is that your favorite scene of the whole season if you were just thinking about it? <laughs> I do get fired up thinking about them at Tower 12. Oh, me too. I mean, <laughs> that's almost 20 minutes of just one continuous scene. <laughs> I yeah. get fired up thinking about them. We got to go to Tower 12. It's true. We should go anytime. Uh, we'll go meet the turtles. We'll that's, go to Tower 12. But that's not where Schwartz and Satchel would meet up to repair <laughs> their relationship. It's too far. Yeah, that wouldn't be convenient. Okay. <laughs> well, right. I, I just, I was, inter- I, I'm sorry to belabor this point, but I was just interested to know that Satchel wanted more from Katie. <laughs> but she sort of, she said, I don't <laughs> She said, she said, I don't think the timing is right. Yeah, she right? had to just let him down softly. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Do you think, um, I mean, how heartbroken do you think Satchel was? <laughs> I think he was just like, okay, and just like kept walking. <laughs> she like didn't even have to tell him. It's just like he just found out and like they never had to talk. He was again. like walking towards her and then she just <laughs> turned him around and he just kept walking the she, other way. She, she, she said, no, no, no. And then he just like walks away. Like it was the easiest breakup. with in- Raquel. Satchel and yeah. Raquel. Okay. That's the only reasonable way that Raquel can come back for season 11 because no one's going to film with her in Sandoval and her are in a relationship. But if she's linked to someone as integral to the foundation of Vanderpump Rules like Satchel, those two could actually... Galaxy lights. Oh, could you imagine if we saw Satchel and Raquel We in should the- do a fan cam. What's that? <laughs> those videos on like TikTok where they always make them of like... Oh. Tom Wom's gams and stuff. So like. it's like it's like it's like fun photos of them yeah. with music, yeah. and we put Satchel yeah. and Raquel. You could be yeah. like, look at the stars. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. Will you make that, please? Because I don't know how to do stuff like that. Yeah, we'll get a on CapCut or something. I'll tell you what. If season eleven has the same intro that it had this season, where we're dipping into the bars and three people are standing there, and then for some reason they continue on and they go to Raquel's apartment and it has galaxy lights and she's <laughs> hanging out with Satchel there, I'd be shocked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back into Joe. it. Yeah. Oh. So this. This. Okay. My two most shocking moments, Schwartz admitting that he actually was saying those jokes with full intent and knowledge and almost trying to out Sandoval's relationship with Raquel. And then hearing that Schwartz 
lied to me like hell and lied <laughs> to all the viewers and told Sheena and the world that him and Joe were absolutely platonic. Nothing has right. ever happened. She's like my best friend. Right. And then he just casually, so casually, admits that, no, of course, we had sex. Situationship. He Friends says, with benefits. He, they were both coming off of long-term relationships. And for a while, we were each other's happy place. I know. And like, he's, yeah. No one asked. I know. <laughs> we didn't want to know that. And Katie is like, she's a creep. Joe's she's a, a creep. She's a Nobody creep. Nobody likes Joe. And he goes, and Schwartz is so pissed. He's like, you're going to get a cease and desist if you keep doing comments like that where Katie goes. And then it shows a beautiful comment from Katie where she's like, I'm going to light Joe on fire. <laughs> Joe is spooky. Her hold on, I took a picture of it because it's so funny. Just, yeah. She says, um, she said, Joe is spooky. I mean, none of us could stand to be around her. Her energy is on par with a crackhead. She is a psycho, and I will also light her on fire with Rachel. I'm just like, her energy is on par with a crackhead. What is that sentence? I don't know, on par. Yeah, it's great. I mean, yeah, Schwartz. I'm also, I, in my life, I sometimes use the term crackhead, but I'm always like, should I be saying that? So it's funny that she just put it I'm, in writing as a public I'm, figure. Yeah, I'm very <laughs> averse to the phrase crackhead. It's not good. I don't really like that term. I don't <laughs> see it used often. It seems like the world has it's moved outdated, past. outdated, yes. But Katie calling her <laughs> She enemy. still can call women whores and crackheads. <laughs> spooky uh, yeah, psychos yeah. And, and um this like the way katie is behaving about joe is exactly the kind of shit that schwartz absolutely detests yeah. and in a world you could say katie is justified in calling joe creepy and weird for moving in with schwartz and then immediately ending her relationship with Kristen, like the one right. friend she had or whatever but then you can also see schwartz's side where he's like why is my wife or ex-wife like <laughs> Saying she's going to light someone on fire that I'm yeah. living with, you know, you he can kind of her a hermit, a little troll, and James is like, "That's mean." Yeah, and he goes, "She's a common, a comment troll." Right. Yeah, he <laughs> says a comment troll. And then they get into the whole big bear of it all, or whatever. Is that where they go? Yeah, they went to Big Bear, and this is this is shocking to me too. I mean, everything is shocking. We're saying I'm saying it so often, but they went on a Big Bear trip. Joe was there. They went snowboarding, and then Sandoval just said, hey, you know who's coming on this trip with me? Raquel. What the and, fuck? And I guess Schwartz is uh, saying that he didn't invite Raquel, that he right. this wasn't a double date right. vacation. But at this point, he knew that Sandoval was, he had a one-night stand right. with Raquel. So you have to know this is going to look bad. And you he was in the know that this is a trip with Sandoval and a you know right a in mistress. january yeah yeah and then james is like raquel hates snowboarding yeah, she was, absolutely hates it. i was really uh glad to know that detail about raquel that she <laughs> that hates why did he kn that's so funny so she can't go to winter house that's true i mean they don't do they they do snowboarding well, each they season do but like a lot of them are bad at it kyle's good right of course well he's the he's smuggler's amazing. notch OG. What's that? <laughs> it's like the like Vermont Resort Smuggler's Notch. Yeah, he grew up and remember isn't Amanda very concerned that she's not like the best skier and that her fam the, his family is going to so sort of like like her yeah. a little less? Yeah. But there's always like I feel like they always end up having some newbies at the on the bunny hill and it's always like a joke and then they're all like let's just go get yeah. drinks or whatever. So you're saying that if Raquel <laughs> can't snowboard, it's not it's not, not actually, a deal breaker. It's not a deal breaker for her to go on Winter House season four. I'm into it. If Kyle and Amanda open the door to Winter House <laughs> and they're just drinking Lover Boy, they just settled in, and then they open the door and Raquel is a cast member on Winter House, do you think, is there any merit to that? I don't want Kyle to have to mediate yet again. I just want him to have fun. Yeah, do you think Kyle would feel like it's sort of his place to see Raquel's side of things. Yeah, because he's basically like the host, I feel like, you he, know? He, he is. Like, and... He and to make her feel welcome. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I, I, just so I can put a, you know, a close on this, you don't think Raquel is going to go on Winter House Season 4? To be determined. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So then we, yeah, like you just said, uh, 
we are seeing Katie and Schwartz's relationship of uh, the epitome of what they always fought about. You know, it's epitomized right here. Right. Um, right after James says that Raquel hates snowboarding, she he said, she just came to fucking fuck Tom. And Lala's like, she only came to suck Sandoval's dick. And I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Take it easy, guys. <laughs> and then everyone just like turns into like, total chaos and is booing they start booing and, they do the, and then they shame they do the game shame, of thrones shame, shame on him it's yeah let's just say like we've been we said this so many times i'll just say you gotta let him talk i, yeah. I, I don't just want to hear you guys screaming over everything sandoval says yeah. i hope this doesn't continue yeah like andy i want to hear the answers to questions and if he has to reference Kristen. Or if he has to start to cry for a second because he actually yeah. is emotional, then just you got to let him. We right. got to see that. Yeah. Do you think that our next phase as a society is to integrate online voting for the death penalty? Yes. <laughs> say, say that again. Do you think? So it would be like Sandoval did X, Y, and Z. Vote now on watchwhathappenslive.tv. Should he get the chair? <laughs> right. Yes or no? So, and it would be for the crimes they committed in the Bravo universe. Yeah. Yes. But, um, and does everyone it, would be like, ah, <laughs> yes, kill him. And then it would be like, firing squad or lethal <laughs> injection. So, so, you think that you're saying that if Andy put up a Watch What Happens Live poll now where, he, where it said, Do you think Sandoval should be sentenced to death by a firing squad? Most people would say yes. I think so. And then his chair would just tip back at the reunion, like in Austin Powers, and he would go into like a fiery pit. Damn. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do and Lala not. would be like, That's right, bitch. Yeah. He's dead now. You see what you get? I hope that Andy doesn't implement what you just said because I don't know if Sandoval's crimes are worth him being killed. Are you sure? <laughs> yes, I do. No, you know what? I'm just going to say full-throatedly, no. Watch What Happens Live should not implement He's a... He's dangerous. I know he's dangerous, but you got... Let's, let's see we if... We have to he... implement the minority report. What's that? Where we see if he's going to commit a crime in the in future. In advance, a prediction. So Andy gets one of those white balls that comes down through those tubes and he has that, you know, thing. And he, Lala's like, I knew it. He's yeah. dangerous. I love Minority Report. You like that movie? Yeah. Not the most. It's been a while, but I remember thinking it was good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Spielberg, <laughs> Tom Cruise. I'm a Tom Cruise apologist, but we don't have to get into that. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, yeah, that was a good Spielberg-Cruise um, collaboration. I, but just to answer your question, no, um... I think Sandoval should have to like live a few more years on <laughs> earth without being sentenced to death so we could see if we ever feel differently about him. It's true. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> what you're saying and what we're saying is that yeah, he shouldn't he shouldn't what? Die for not yet. <laughs> Because there are certain people we would have put to death right. earlier that are now back on board. Right, right. I would have been. You uh, do not want to know how many times I would have sentenced the cast members to death in the past. So I am so glad we haven't had that okay, option. Cool. Good. Okay. So, oh, are we at yet at the section? <laughs> you can tell me, but I have a note that I want to include where Lisa says that she would have had that that bar whipped up into shape. Are we there yeah. yet? She. Uh, and of all or Andy and of all, Andy starts to talk <laughs> about the no, Andy starts to talk about the struggles of Schwartz and Sandys and he just says what he thinks it's yeah. funny it's just his opinion he yeah. goes do you think if you guys would have maybe not focused on food up front this yeah. thing would have been He's like uh, why not just have snacks yeah and and, and, and Santa goes I wish we could have done that I wish it was Greg who wanted the food and then and then uh Andy is like um Lisa <laughs> It's like, how long do you think you would have gotten that place from a Mexican cantina to Shorts and Sandy's? And Lisa goes, well, it would have been decorated the next week. And then I'd say three months or whatever. She's just like pouring salt in the wound yeah. there of how good she is at turning restaurants yeah. around. Well, she also says, because Andy goes, um, you know, she's like, I gave them their start. Yes. Uh, you know, they have 5% of Tom Tom. And Andy goes, I mean, 5%. Like being like, that's a joke. Oh, he said that? Yeah. And then she goes, well... 
TomTom cost five million and they only had to give me 50 grand. And I'm like, what the fuck? How much money do we need to raise for the Ken and Lisa's treehouse restaurant? Five million? Well, we yes. I mean, our our listeners know. Um, well, I don't know if we ever actually said this on the main feed, <laughs> which maybe we should just do a little, just very quickly. But when Pump Restaurant closes, when it bites the dust... There are still those olive trees there, which are not going to be supplanted. They're not going to be taken out by Lisa and planted at Villa Rosa. We thought it would be a perfect place because that's still Vanderpump Row. Yeah. We think a restaurant called Ken and Lisa's Treehouse Restaurant would be amazing where Ken and Lisa are in a glass house up amongst the olive trees. And you get to watch them have dinner, dinner theater. They are up there for strategic you know, an hour yeah. and you watch them. And then that's a restaurant that Amy and I own. And if we get enough money, this could actually happen. But what Amy is saying is that with, if it costs 5 million, that's, I mean, that's a hefty price tag. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll just say personally, I don't want to get into your finances, but five mil, I'm, uh, I'm coming up short. I'm just shy. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming up short. But if you do like the idea of, uh, Ken and Lisa's Treehouse Restaurant. That is something that Amy and I would provide in that space. Yeah. More on that on our Patreon if you're interested. If you're uh, interested to hear our journey with trying to get that um, <laughs> uncovered. Can I just say that my little bit of gossip about yeah, Schwartz and Sandy's is this? Say. Okay. So last night at Junkyard Dog, I'm at the height of fervor <laughs> and um, having the time of my life. I just did a shot of tequila and I'm hooting and I'm screaming. And then someone whispers in my ear, that <laughs> it was a dark figure an anonymous source i didn't even look back because I, I i was just like who is this i have no idea they said i know that you like greg the restaurant tour and owner of Schwartz and sandy's but he is one of the most awful evil men i've ever worked with and i go who was that <laughs> who's Very there gone. and I, when i looked back <laughs> She was gone. She? She. I knew it was a female <laughs> voice in my ear. So anonymous gossip. I can't say who this was because I didn't see them. But they whispered in my ear at Junkyard Dog that Greg is actually an awful, awful person. And I know that's a surprise to you. <laughs> and I had been defending this man forever since episode two <laughs> and it turns out he is a stinker completely yeah. i'm basing that just off one ghostly voice in my ear but yeah. that was shocking for me to hear not shocking for you to hear yeah i mean they kind of allude to him being a they, stinker yeah there's some anti-greg sentiment uh in the reunion i don't you know sandoval says like it's no secret that we've had a rocky road <laughs> i thought that was kind of funny yeah um but schwartz even is like i'm not gonna scapegoat sandoval even though that would be the easy thing to do he's like there were other issues at play that they were kind of saying that greg would always pull the e-brake right when they were about to make a decision yeah um, like they'd be um like putting up those james terrell lights in the bathroom and he'd be like whoa 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 what the hell is going on here <laughs> yeah i did love that andy's like was it worth it like was shorts and sandy's worth it yeah and uh <laughs> uh, uh tom Schwartz is saying how it was all consuming and that it put a lot of uh weight on his relationship um and katie's like it's not like it's brain surgery you're yeah. not curing cancer you're just opening a bar like get a grip and he's like you're being glib and yeah. she's like i'm not being glib yeah and i'm like okay i'm like yeah he's not curing cancer he's not you know they did a bad job at opening it swiftly but i think almost anyone you've ever talked to that's run a restaurant or bar says it's like the most harrowing experience like people that run restaurants it's like oh, it's awful. horrible it's awful and it's like the most competitive <laughs> business you can ever be in you have yeah. thousands of competitors everywhere you look yeah, yeah it sounds I'm awful also like uh can i buy a sandwich yet katie they uh, said end of may yeah what's the date today may 25th right so they have five or six days, however many days are in May. Yeah. I think it could happen. We saw that table was in there, right? Maybe, you know, on uh, Memorial Day, they'll open. Can we be the first people standing in line when it opens? I want that green goddess sandwich. If we're, what, if, what if we're the first people to eat it, the sandwich once it's opened? Like the first day, 6 a.m. Okay. You want okay. to be? TBD on 6 a.m., but. What if it opens at 9 a.m.? There's no way. They're going to open at like 11. Okay. 
So if it opens at 11 a.m., <laughs> could we get there at 10.45 a.m. and stand by the door? Okay. I also liked that LVP was like, no uh, no shade, but me and my husband made it through 37 restaurants. I like that, too. <laughs> she, she, she gave what... She was being too nice or whatever, you know, being too supportive of Sandoval. And she was being very dismissive in this instance about the restaurant. She wanted to be hard, a hard ass, and mean and give them the business about this specific instance she was like right. she was pretty aggressive about like how the, the the business should not have affected your relationship she goes Schwartz get your ass off the fence post and yeah. say something that actually means something I was like yeah where is this energy for Sandoval I know you, you fully have to me of when uh she called him the wussy pussy I know it's like t- come on Schwartz <laughs> doesn't deserve the ire of this about his business when Sandoval's sitting right there right um, um yeah. yeah there's more LVP drama because um Andy's like, Ariana, you said you won't speak to anyone that still oh, has ties I like this moment. with Sandoval, but what about LVP? And uh, she goes, we just won't be as close anymore. And Lisa's like, "What? now wait a minute. That strikes a chord with Lisa. She can't believe she heard that. What do you expect me to do? And then Ariana very coldly says, I don't expect anything from anyone. And I was like, what the hell? Yeah, she is not feeling Lisa's energy about this <laughs> at all and that was the nicest like Ariana is not doesn't want to go toe to toe with Lisa in this right an environment she's basically just saying like like ending the conversation yeah like she's saying definitively her and Lisa are not going to be as close yeah which makes sense and he's like do you think that she should like buy her buy him out and she goes I think she knows what's best for her and I was like what does that mean? And then Lisa even says, what the <laughs> hell are you trying to say? I mean. Yeah. Uh, and then she's like, I'm not the one that's going to be giving LVP business advice. And which is, which is a nice answer. She makes yeah. it, the, it like, now it's like a fun, you know, playful yeah. repartee. It kind of but, chills out towards the end, but you can tell she's still like not cool. And um, I, I, did we already miss the moment where James says you're being too soft on them? Or, or is that coming up when James says to Lisa specifically, you're being too ho- you're being too soft on on Sandoval, and they get yeah. really fired up. Like Lisa has, you know, kind of, uh, you know, they were pretty upset with Lisa for yeah. this reunion, uh, unlike any other reunion, because like, Lisa doesn't really do anything that makes them mad, right? You know, yeah, no, it's it's hard to watch. Like I said, I'm old school. I'm like LVP. It's called Vanderpump rules right yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it was it was kind of shocking just how it was when lala said to lisa like i don't care about your opinion yeah it was it was shocking to see ariana be like cold to lisa and have lisa go like what do you mean by that I we're know. not actually going to be friends yeah dark yeah um also we kind of we already said something about her is going to open at end of may but they revealed that they made two hundred thousand dollars on merch i know i know that was um i mean amazing for them a hundred thousand each <laughs> So Ariana has more money than we even know about. Like, yeah, Bic razors, Uber, Uber <laughs> One, yeah, this raising canes. What if they did double or nothing and they took that two hundred thousand and invested it on what we were just talking about? You know, ten percent treehouse restaurant. I don't. Would that work? <laughs> they could drop the sandwiches from the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering because. I'm sure they have investors. Oh, sorry. I'm sure they have investors, but that $200,000 would go a long way <laughs> in terms of investment for yeah. a new restaurant. For sure. No, I think we should have a meeting about it. Okay. Um, yeah. She also was like, Andy, we brought you merch so you can replace that piece of shit uh, Tom Tom hoodie. And Andy kept being like, it's a really nice hoodie. And Lisa, I think, says... <laughs> don't call that hoodie oh, a piece of shit, true, doesn't yeah. she? Like she gets a little. I mean, I'm burnt. gonna be um, honest right now. That Tom Tom hoodie is a sleigh. Oh yeah, it's so. It cool. looks so cool. It looks like it's worth like two hundred dollars. Like I'd be like, all right, that's steep, but I'll pay. There's something about her merch. It's giving. They got some tweets saying, How, "What can we buy?" And they went online to freaking don't, zazzle. Don't say it. Don't say. It. No, just kidding. You're right. I mean, he's. It's yeah, giving zazzle. Yeah, it's giving zazzle. Well, I don't know. I mean, it it did. I mean, whatever. Happy for them. They made the cash. That's what they want. They should have made a search or a shirt <laughs> and uh, merch of the original logo designs that Ariana shows when they're pixelated. Yeah. She shows all those logos. They should have just made that a shirt. Yeah. Those ten different. 
favorite. I want a shirt with the picture of the foam core sign that's in the corner. Yes, of course. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you talking about the something about her yeah, 2022? 2022. I want a shirt well, that has that. the table with the tablecloth unironed <laughs> with the sandwich on it with the broken glass on the floor. Yes. Wait. Uh, yeah. I want a shirt that says exactly that. I wanted to say the sign. There's something about her sign propped up on the table. And then you see the spilt wine glass. And it's kind of like an epitome of that something about her launch. Yeah. We can't disparage something about her merch. <laughs> joke's on us. They made 200 grand. Yeah. The joke's on us. And I actually, I like the shirt that has the sandwich ingredients all unfolding. Mm-hmm. You don't like that one? That's Zazzle. They blurred Zazzle. it. Remember when uh, yeah. Sheena wore it on the finale? They blurred it out. I mean, I guess... If- because the artist yeah but is that giving zazzle (laughs) it's giving not specific to (laughs) their business (laughs) okay but but you know i'll always say i'm a hater i'm a hater no no no, i'll always say katie and ariana we're the most supportive we already said we're going to be there day one eating sandwiches right in front of you the very first says the vegan sandwich is amazing yeah so we're getting it but i do think they had to sort of rush that merch out yeah in an but good thing you did because you got all that money, yeah, and we love that. And if you want to turn that money into an even bigger profit, there is a restaurant opening up on Robertson that I think <laughs> you're going to love to be a part of. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, oh, oh, that Tom Tom hoodie. Yeah. Um, we we own it. I think I told you, uh, Megan's mom owns that rare piece of the merch. Razzle from, dazzle one. Yes, the oh. beautiful one. So how much was that? I think it was like you know thirty five or forty. No. Really? Yeah, a steal amazing i know it's amazing and so if anyone thinks that that has awful evil energy because it was on raquel's body just imagine there's another beautiful spirit in the world that's actually wearing it and has love for it raquel didn't taint that whole (laughs) merch run right yeah do you agree with that i agree um yeah tom tom's been around a minute yeah right so what are you saying (laughs) I would go back. Right. We can't, oh, oh, man. Are we talking about that? I haven't been to Tom Tom in so long. Since March yeah, it's 1st. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of sad. Do you think is it tainted forever? I mean, I honestly feel like Schwartz and San- Sandy's is even more tainted now than it was at the height of Scandal because we know so much more Right. And now. now we know about Greg the Egg. And now we know that Greg the Egg is this monster. <laughs> like, Schwartz and Sandy's is getting, like, you know, I don't know. It's sounding more and more off-putting yeah tom tom still doesn't have the full stain right yeah my friend uh at uh junkyard dog last night wore a schwartz and sandy's hat and we were like she kept like taking it off she was like i'm scared to wear it <laughs> wow it was that like the one that tom always wears like their classic um yeah it's like terry cloth oh okay that's so cool um i have it too but i haven't worn it but since. we can still morally go to tom tom right yeah we have to support lisa I got to support Lisa, especially after that reunion. Yeah, she was, it was a harrowing night for her. So they made so um, much money. You, they pan to um, Schwartz and Sandy and they're going $200,000 <laughs> on that merch. I can't believe. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't believe. I can't believe they made 200000 Yeah. Um, okay, so then there's a brief conversation about how Lala loves Brock now. She had a humbling thing happen that changed her mind. Um, Sheena kind of then they get into how she regrets that she didn't see Katie's side she was you know blinded by her loyalty to Raquel and that she related to Raquel because she has historically been bullied by Katie and Lala and then Lala goes about the word bullying she's like let's that's pre-k we're in Bravo you know we're you signed up for this and Sandoval goes bully is not an age thing and uh he's like you are a bully and then she goes fuck off mister i fuck my girlfriend's best friend and he's like is that your get out of jail free card you're just gonna bring that up for everything which okay i'll stop right there and say that almost no bravo show has not had an argument about using the word bully yeah once it um once that came into the ether around like systematic (laughs) bullying yeah like Five years ago, bullying was introduced, and now every single franchise has had a bullying instance. Right, which, as we've discussed on our recap of season one, <laughs> Stassi uh, in, is bullying Laura Lee via text, and Lisa also hesitates to call it bullying. She's like, 
it's very close to what you would call bullying. Is bullying <laughs> being mean to someone? I think, yeah, it's like pointedly, like kind of like harassing someone specifically, I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I, I just take it for granted that I know what bullying means right. when they bring it up. But yeah, like with the Stasi and Laura Lee, it's she was really mad at Laura Lee for something she did and sent her, you know, a hundred text very mean text yeah. and it's like yeah she's bullying her yeah right? is that it yeah she's yeah, mad at just her like making someone feel like shit <laughs> right yeah so yeah i think lala was trying to dead the bullying conversation she was right. like we're just mad at you we're just being horrible to you right. right now because you did something horrible so let's not talk about bullying yeah. anymore which is interesting because lala was bullied in the early I know seasons bully to obliv- oblivion yeah. by Katie they were all like you're a whore like yeah. you're a skank they all were making fun of her for PJ blowjobs everything yeah. like she was absolutely by definition bullied by them the one scene I felt and she s- cried and yeah. she went home to her mom she was so upset yeah I'm like lest we forget that scene when Sheena cries at the table when Katie's like like calling her fake or whatever yeah. and she goes if i'm two faced and my fake then why am i fr- you're friends with me and she like stormed yeah. out i was like i felt so bad for sheena so yeah. she definitely has this resentment towards totally Katie. yeah um and so then yeah sandoval tries to call lala a bully and uh she of course brings up the affair which you know is her get out of jail free card i feel like now she could either say her baby is being affected or the cheating is yeah outweighs ev- all else which i'm kind of that but that's when he she goes on a weird diatribe about sticks and stones about how like she can say whatever she wants because as long as her actions aren't bad she you know hurtful words don't matter which yeah. i think is a flawed point of view <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i'm not sure what she's trying to get out there just that she would never like physically do something but she's so cutting with words that like that doesn't actually mean anything it doesn't actually hurt you but then when schwartz tried to cut her with words back she was like you are literally taking food out of my baby's (laughs) mouth so she always wants it both ways was that sticks and stones like did schwartz just (laughs) would did schwartz just say words that had no effect on you or did that physically affect you you know which is what she was trying to you know say yeah um (laughs) Uh, that's when uh, Sandoval says, "I fart Mozart, everybody," and I was like, "Jesus was, Christ!" Was that a, that's about Lala? Yeah, like that she doesn't Basically her shit the, doesn't yeah, stink exactly. Man, I I've never heard that before, and I never <laughs> want to hear ridiculous. it again. Where did he pick that up? <laughs> it's terrible. Um, and LVP starts going after Lala again. Um, she's like, "You've been pretty aggressive." Um, <laughs> and then James can't take it anymore and he leaves. Yeah, that's what... So I I, I said it too early. That's when yeah. James says, you're being too easy on them, Lisa. And then yeah. he like can't stand it. He gets yeah. up. He gets up and leaves. And for some reason, the stage door of the studio is like a house door. Oh, wow. Like it has the like the half circle with like the stained glass on the top, like a suburban house. Oh, I got to look at that again. So I'm like, is that's this it. like a sitcom set? What is this? Anyway. And then... And then is this this is the end right of yeah part, this it's is like the end next of- week on wow wow well yeah we- and then the only i only took two notes for okay. the coming attractions uh james says with ali by his side he says her mom would talk about my penis size and i was like I didn't, wait, wait, wait. I, I didn't see the next week on, I think, because I was barely struggling to watch the <laughs> reunion over three times. What What did Allie say? I, Allie's next to James. Okay. And James says, her mom would talk about my penis size. And I think Allie says something like, I didn't like that. And I was like, are they talking about her mom? Are they talking about Raquel's, Raquel's mom? mom? Like, what the fuck are they talking about? Someone said that Raquel's mom was really like sexual with peter did you ever see that scene where she um oh. she like grabs peter's like <laughs> chest or something maybe i'm misremembering that but i think they must be talking about raquel's mom right that i guess so uh, not ali's mom he wouldn't no. say what ali's mom said about his penis size right. on camera right then at the yeah, reunion i Allie- assumed it was raquel but um we all know what he thinks about raquel's mom <laughs> <laughs> what does he think she is again he calls her a fat bitch at thanksgiving dinner yeah i wish like he, I know, I know, he had to call her that. Why did it have to be a Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> right? When a family's supposed to be getting along. Yeah. 
he ruined hol- holiday um <laughs> I, I'm, I'm excited to see ally back in this world yeah. she got such a great first season to be a part of it's scandaval true. and, and I, she broke the location of i know the scandaval. i know and they kept just saying like why would we ever do that at the abbey and then it just turns out you yeah. did do that yeah and then um they quickly they show sandoval and raquel plotting together and he just goes Ariana's gonna unleash on you and I'm like holy shit what's gonna happen damn unleashed well I'm excited it's it's hard to watch reunions because you want all of it right now right and you don't want to wait and it's their parts so the anticipation is so high you don't get everything and it's really you know you don't get everything until you know three weeks from now which is hard right. but I felt like this you know this was great great yeah. moments and then yeah we'll get it'll you know, since they're spacing it out and we haven't even seen Raquel yet, it's going to really spice it up next week. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see Raquel on the hot seat try to formulate, a, you know, <laughs> a, a few sentences that sort of make sense. Yeah. That people can listen to. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for her. It's going to be hard for Sandoval. Um, <laughs> but we'll be there watching it a Junkyard Dog That's and then right. talking about it next week. Um, Amy, is there anything we didn't, you know, get to? I feel like we recapped the hell out of this thing. Yeah, we gave it our all. Uh, there's more to come. Um, you're getting this on Friday and there will be yet another Patreon episode coming on Monday. So if you haven't subscribed to that, take a look. It's fun stuff over there. Yes. We get real goofy. Oh yeah, we get a, we get sillier there because we just love our Villa Rosa <laughs> VIPs and we feel like we're in a comfortable gazebo at uh, Lisa and Ken's Villa Rosa estate. Yeah. So we get a little silly and comfortable. And we are next week is the season finale of season one, right? Yeah. The, yeah. We mm-hmm. Monday coming up on the Patreon is the season finale. Which if you love Vanderpump Rules like we know you do, then you're going to want to hear our you know iconic takes on season one episode eight absolutely okay right. well <laughs> i say it every week but when you think of someone that loves you in your life imagine that times 10 that's amy and i right <laughs> yes every every <laughs> single day okay in no other house can be except please please subscribe to us on youtube <laughs> i never want to talk about youtube again yeah. after a thousand subscribers we are not talking about youtube that's right we're halfway there Yeah, we're halfway there. So we love you so much. We're going to sign off. Thank you for everything. And we'll see you next week. Kisses. Bye. (laughs) This one's for you.